You're watching Cannabis Culture News Live. I'm Jeremiah Vandermeer, editor of Cannabis Culture and Pod TV, with my homeboy Jeff on the couch. What's up, Pod TV? Mom, you know him well. And Chris Bennett's in the house. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. And if you couldn't tell already, this is a Christmas episode. I'm wearing my Siberian shaman hat. And uh, we're going to talk to Chris. Stoney the Christmas tree, too. Stoney got Stoney the Christmas tree over here. Oh, yeah. shit, the lights went off, though. He was plugged in before. Stoney was plugged know, in. He's uh, unplugged now. Is he, can you rattle those cords? We have Pete 2.0, tech guy, here just for the tree. There oh, perfect. There he is. There's Stoney all wow, lit up. look at that. Magic touch. Stoney well, all lit up. Yeah, so we're going to talk a little bit about how Santa Claus is, I guess, based on Siberian sh mushroom-picking shaman from... You know, up at the North Pole, riding their sleighs and reindeers and such. Yeah, well, that's the that's the claim of a number of mushroom enthusiasts, including people like Professor Carl Rock and uh, Jan Irvin, Jan Irvin, and uh, others. Uh, Professor John Rush as well is a proponent of that theory, and uh, they point to things like the red and white costume of uh, Santa. Uh, be, signifying the red and white uh, colors of the, the, the Amanita muscaria mushroom or fly agaric mushroom. And actually, shaman from Siberia that in the Tungus region, actually the term shaman itself comes from this region, uh, um, Siberian shaman. And uh, they would dress in red and white because of the mushroom as well. And then uh, I, ideas like that uh, the, uh, the reindeer would uh, eat the Amanita muscaria mushroom, and this would give them their ability to fly. Uh, um, and uh, you could drink the uh, urine from, uh, from mushrooms and stuff like that. And then uh, the, the solstice was when a lot of this mushroom activity took place. It was given as a gift around solstice time. Uh, um, Professor Rux even suggested that uh, Rudolph's red nose, the story of that, uh, he's the, the, the ranger that leads the rest, may be somehow related to, uh, to the whole Amanita muscaria mushroom thing. So there's a few things in there that are, are pretty interesting. Well, the reindeer analogies. eat the mushrooms themselves. They dig yeah. through the snow, find the mushrooms. Yeah. And, you know, t this year I was reading a little bit more about it, and there's other strange symbols you know, the, the mushrooms themselves, apparently the Amanita muscaria, grows underneath of pine trees. That's right, yeah. That's and right. Another which, one. of course, looks like a Christmas tree mm -hmm. with yeah. presents underneath it when they grow underneath of them. And then, you know, this whole idea of hanging the mushrooms onto the trees to dry them yeah, yeah. looks like ornaments on the tree, Christmas right. decorations. And uh, at the same time, the hanging uh, stuff in socks on a fireplace to dry them. You know, mushrooms, you know, and also the, the whole coming down the chimney thing. Um, I was reading that because the snow is so high there that the, they would often, of course, have to have the whole of their house at the top. They would come down with a big sack over their shoulder. It's like they're coming down the chimney with the sack of goodies. Yeah, right. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. And then, you know, also uh, the other things are like, say, the, the Persians, uh, God Mithra, who was popular in Rome, he was born on December 25th. It didn't become the Christian holiday till like 375 A.D., and uh, there's a lot of cannabis consumption in the old uh, cult of Mithras. There's a good uh, documentary I have online with uh, Professor Carl Ruck mm -hmm. and Dr. David Hillman talking about that. But, you know, Mithra himself wears the red cap, discovered in a cave, kind of like the, in, the, in the manger, in the, in, in, in the stall there, like G Shiva, and uh, people kind of show up for, for his birth as well, you know, so similarities there. Well, and it's the religion of the Magi, the three Magi who come and announce Jesus is. Right. I mean, a lot of it seems to come from other, from stories that are elsewhere throughout history as well. There's yeah. archetypical stories, um, pagan stories, a yeah. lot of them. Yeah, for and sure. like, you know, I wanted to get into the whole Jesus stuff too, because obviously Christian well, holiday. The religious and then the fantasy, right? Yeah. So well, but both or. You know, this whole idea of Jesus' birthday being at Christmas time and the resurrection and all that stuff, you know, we get a lot of our, our Christmas stuff from that. Yeah. But it is odd that we have like this Santa Claus thing. And, you know, through the years when I've been looking at it, that's also not just the Siberian shaman thing, but Santa Claus in Europe, you know, this, this whole idea that he and the elves around him and stuff, it's all very pagan. Yeah. And it all kind of comes oh, from... Sure. Yeah, it, it's I've been to, I've been to the Santa Claus parade in Amsterdam. It's wild because it's uh, strange. It goes on when the cup is there, so I've seen it all. And they paint themselves all black. And black stuff Pete. And, oh, right, yeah. oh yeah, dude. It is, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's kind, it's kind of racist. Strange, <laughs> yeah, but they, Black Pete. Well, isn't okay, what is Black Pete exactly? It doesn't. I mean, don't know about Black Pete. I think but, he uh, Saint, Saint Nicholas was the uh, patron saint of pawnbrokers. Right. right, and you know it's kind of funny because <laughs> Jesus chased the money lenders out of the temple in the Christian story, and then the 
patron saint of money lenders. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Overtakes the holiday. Yeah, you know. And Coca-Cola. Santa's an anagram for Satan as well, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, and, you know, Coca-Cola had actually a lot to do with proliferating Absolutely. the image of Santa yeah, yeah. wearing Absolutely. the red outfit. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. for sure. For with sure. Norman Rockwell drawing yeah. things like It seems that. to be a combination well, to St. Nick, and then there's some uh, Norse figure, uh, whole Nikar, I think his name was. Yeah. Uh, um, and uh, um, then this whole slam that the Coca-Cola people put on it and yeah. kind of hybridized it all together, you know. And then or it, it wasn't Norman like Rockwell. There's another artist that popularized it for them, but yeah. I just can't remember his name right now. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, there's all of that. But of course, Jesus himself has links to other drugs. Maybe, I mean, doesn't uh, Jack Harrer think that there's some links to mushrooms or something about Jesus too? But Well, that's, uh, this comes from the works of Dr. John Allegro. And uh, uh, he says the whole story of uh, Christianity is merely symbolic uh, t- retelling of the of uh, the mushroom and that Jesus himself and the story is a mushroom. But uh, I'm not a proponent of uh, right. uh, uh, of Allegro's book. I read it. I didn't really think it held a lot of weight. Not to say that Allegro wasn't a great scholar otherwise and did a lot of really great work with the Dead Sea Scrolls and stuff like mm-hmm. that, for sure. But, I mean, you have a different theory, of course, about Jesus. Well, uh, um, this goes back to this Hebrew term uh, that's becoming more and more popular nowadays, kind of bosom that uh, um, I've kind of popularized this di- idea, this work of this earlier anthropologist and etymologist, Sula Bennett, who said these were uh, Hebrew terms to cannabis. And uh, um, there were other researchers uh, uh, suggesting that the term canna as well was a reference to cannabis, uh, such as uh, Rabbi Emanuel Lowe. Uh, um, and since then, numbers of researchers have shown. And, and, and when you take a look at the similarity to the uh, uh, Assyrian and Babylonian terms for cannabis, kanabu, and how it was used identically as an incense and all, as well as an anointing oil in Assyria and Babylon to open one's ear to God, right? You know what I mean? And along with a lot of like uh, healing applications. Um, and uh, this, uh, in the Hebrew account, it, this stuff was uh, uh, kind of fell by the wayside as Israel fell down and became ruled by other kingdoms, and, uh, um, but reemerged during their whole early Christian period. And the term Christ itself is the uh, Greek of uh, the Hebrew term Messiah, which means the anointed one. And uh, anointed. In, in, in the New Testament, uh, Jesus doesn't baptize anybody, but uh, sends out the 12 apostles with the anointing oil to cast out demons and heal the sick. And casting out demons in the old day may have well been doing things like treating people for epilepsy, which we're finding, you know, a lot of uh, real powerful effect. Epilepsy right. was thought to be demonic possession uh, up until well into medieval times, you know. And uh, in uh, other texts that we've rediscovered in the last uh, century, the, the Nag Hammadi Library, Gnostic texts and stuff like that, this anointing oil plays a really important uh, role. And in those texts themselves, it says there's only water in the baptism, but there's fire in the anointing oil. Through the anointing oil, we're initiated into unfading bliss and uh, uh, apply it for cuts and wounds and the straightening of crooked limbs. And uh, it's like this big miracle thing, yeah. uh, um, kind hmm, of like what's happening with, uh, with cannabis right now. Carton you know? around yeah. cannabidiol oh, yeah. all over well, the place. And as you said, this whole linkage through the etymology of the word cannabossum, I mean, that's that's pretty solid. In yeah, a way. yeah. No, it's 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 a, it's a, there's a, a super good case for it. When you look at later Hebrew terms for cannabis, uh, it's a very similar spelling. And uh, um, when you trace the word cannabis back through history in the area and then compare it with similar terms in use in the area, the, the, the case becomes increasingly strong. In the Old Testament references, uh, it's like the, the, the term is canna and then canna bossum's more the Hebrew, Hebrew term, but it, it identifies canna as uh, coming from a distant land and uh, coming in on trade routes. And uh, this is what happened. This, the ancient Scythians who spread cannabis throughout the ancient world uh, um, were supplying you know, different uh, uh, trade routes with cannabis, and it was coming with the name that it, it, it appeared with and was adopted into the Hebrew language as, as, as it was known throughout the, uh, the world because of this uh, identical Indo-European term. Mm-hmm. So... And Chris, you've written a lot about this. You have several books on the subject, and, yep. and a recent one about um, I mean that takes a lot of stuff into consideration. Yeah, cannabis and the soma solution, and that's uh, a, a lot. More. It has a chapter on some of that stuff, uh, a couple of chapters on that sort of stuff, but also deals with cannabis in a variety of cultures, particularly yeah. uh, amongst Indo-European groups, and then also in India and places like that. 
yeah, yeah, it's a wider scope than just the Christian stuff, but um, that's great. So Jesus was a pothead, and Santa Claus is a Siberian yeah, yeah. mushroom picker. Yeah, and then uh, um, you know some people have uh, suggested that Charles Dickens was a uh, hash issue user was something he was accused of ah. in the press of his day, and the whole uh, uh, um, uh, uh, the Christmas Carol yeah. is kind of reminiscent of somebody you know in the story he eats some sort of he thinks he has food poisoning or something, and he's eating something that's giving him all the visions on Christmas. Eve night, but it uh, <laughs> it plays a lot like a lot of accounts of uh, hashish in that time, nineteenth century. Yeah, he's when a lot of people with, were eating it. Yeah, and he's having a bunch really of powerful ghosts. experiences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Scrooge sure. is like you know yeah, somehow yeah, gets yeah. a big chunk of hash in yeah. his drink or something. Yeah, for sure, man. <laughs> <laughs> Classic well, near death the experience. The only way to get real high on that stuff, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They got yeah. Visions of sugar plums yeah. dancing in people's heads. Well, oh, they things? had some pretty good quality <laughs> stuff back in the, in that day. You know what I mean? Some of the stuff coming from. Uh, the Middle East was really potent uh, uh, cannabis preparations, you know, it would rival today's products, I'm sure. Well, yeah, and I mean, it, it seems like the, <laughs> it's funny, a lot of the Christmas decorations and stuff that are related, I was looking at a bunch of different old Christmas decorations, they seem to be drug references in a lot of ways. Like, there's lots of mushrooms in them in Europe, especially, but there's leaves that happen to look like, you know, there's all kinds of, yeah. I don't know, I, it's interesting. Yeah. And little elves in amongst them. You know, it reminds me of the whole mescalito idea. Yeah, right. You know, these little elves or whatever. That's usually what people see when they're taking mescaline and things like that. So, who knows? Yeah. I guess they help the Siberian shaman. Um, Quite possibly. Now, there's a BBC clip, actually, about the, the reindeer eating the mushrooms that right, I'm going to play right. here. Um, and, yeah, so this has been out. I can't remember when it actually came out a few years ago now, but... Lending credibility to Carl Rex theories. I think they get a little bit into that whole yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, but it shows, it actually has footage of these reindeer um, getting down with the shroomies and doing some uh, digging and chewing. So here, check this out. It's actually pretty well done. Um, we'll play this for you, just make sure the sound's working. BBC, Santa Claus. All right. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. So, Chris, I wanted to ask you about the mushrooms themselves. Now, um, urban Shaman. I'm wearing a shirt here. There you go. Cool. They're actually available in the Urban Shaman. That's right. Yeah, they're available for, you can sell them for decorative purposes. <laughs> right, for decorative, for hanging on the Christmas tree. <laughs> Hang them on the Christmas tree. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, shamanically, when they've been used, uh, they, they, they're used in kind of large amounts. 10 grams would actually be a small amount of Amanita muscaria. Oh, and wow. 30 grams would be like what a shaman would take. Oh, wow. Uh, um, and uh, there can be a lot of like, uh, when you get into the higher realms of it, it can be quite dreamy. You can even like kind of nod off and have kind of, you know, intense dreams and stuff like that. But uh, generally, there's a lot of like depth perception changes. Uh, um, kind of uh, Lewis Carroll kind of uh, in his uh, Alice in Wonderland, uh, he kind of played on some of the, when the Alice grows bigger and smaller from the mushroom and stuff, it's right. kind of a play on the Amanita muscaria's visual effects. Uh, um, so it's not of, like a you know yeah. stark hallucination, but you just yeah, kind of yeah. have... Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, you kind of drunky kind of feeling, you know, a bit rubbery body, that type of stuff. You know? Happy 420, everybody. Happy, Happy 420. 420. It's 420 here in Vancouver. Time for rip. Time to smoke some Christmas trees. Absolutely. <laughs> so that's cool. And but I mean, how much do you have to take to get anything from it? Is it at least ten grams? Ten you know? grams. Yeah, so that's a yeah. big chunk. Yeah, it's a weird one because uh, people feel it at different uh, dosage levels, you know, and feel it differently. And so it's it's a hard one to to just lay out a, a flat number. And then you know, there's a variation of the active chemical from mushroom to mushroom, even mm -hmm. uh, um, seasonally and from where they're growing and all these types of things. Uh, um, there's a lot of misinformation about it uh, out there as well. You mm -hmm. Can you concentrate that by making it into a tea? Uh, yeah, you can make it into a tea, and uh, there's extracts. People make extracts of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was think I was saying earlier, the active chemicals can uh, be re-ingested through the urine, apparently, in some of the early accounts of uh, Siberian shaman uh, taking the Amanita muscaria at the rituals. Everybody would start chanting, piss in the pot, piss in the pot. <laughs> and then he would, uh, um, you know, piss, and then some people would get to drink the... Uh, 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 get the get the, the effects a second time right. out of the, out of the Amanita muscaria. <laughs> Jeff's like, well, got a pot. I think I'll skip yeah. the mushroom piss. <laughs> yeah, but thank you. <laughs> now, <laughs> wait, I my, I was just thinking of something, and now I forgot. What I'm it was. sorry. Damn it, it was hilarious too. Oh <laughs> uh, uh, well, well, that's really cool, man. I, I, it's interesting about. So, I mean, do people actually? 
you know, is it in use a lot or is it just kind of... Oh, people, you know, it's around. There's people that are enthusiasts of it, for there sure, are, that, yeah. that like it and like the effects. Uh, um, it, it was, again, it was has been suggested as uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, ingredients in the Agent Soma drink, the one that I, right. I say to his cannabis. And I have a chapter in my book uh, uh, um, arguing with that theory and showing why I don't think that's the case. Right. Uh, um, as particularly, this is the works of R. Gordon Wasson, who, uh, um, although I disagree with that theory, has done a lot for the idea of uh, the use of psychoactive substances in the formation period of a lot of religions hmm. uh, and bringing that idea to light, which I think is a really important uh, uh, anthropological perspective. Very oh, cool. Oh, Moses and the burning bush. There was a fucking tripping going on there yeah, for, yeah, sure. for sure. Oh, yeah. Well, there's other Bible references all yeah, over the yeah, place. Oh, yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, and in popular culture about the mushroom, Super Mario Brothers. He eats the mushroom and grows yeah. big and yes, small and everything. I guess that's probably a, a yeah, yeah. same yeah. with same, the same death looking mushroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it, it looks just like an amanita. It looks a lot so. like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that, you know, I'm sure the guys that made that were trippers. <laughs> yeah, I don't it doubt had it. Something yeah. to do with tripping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Well, thanks, Chris. I appreciate it. It's and, awesome. Yeah, it's awesome to have you on. And actually, I'm going to play at the end of the show today. You've just released, um, or actually, it was a few weeks ago now, but I just put it up on Pot TV. Mm -hmm. And this is your latest. It's a lecture you gave. Yeah, um, lecture I gave in Northern California. Uh, um, just an overview of uh, cannabis in the agent world. So I take a look at a number of different cultures, cannabis in uh, agent uh, Europe and agent India, China. Uh, um, and and uh, in, the, in the biblical references as well, I go in a little bit more detail about the, uh, uh, the biblical stuff. And if anybody else wants to uh, find out more about Cannabossum, I have a documentary on Pot TV. Uh, if you Google or YouTube search Cannabossum, K-A-N-E-H-B-O-S-M, <coughs> you'll find the, uh, the video. And, yeah, for uh, sure. Give it, a, give, it a, give it an overview. And it, what's your website where people can find your books and all of uh, that Forbiddenfruitpublishing.com, if it's up. I <laughs> right, oh yeah, we're working on that right now, that's yeah. right. Um, it probably is now, because okay, cool. all of that stuff's been moved over, and that was working on it last night. So cool. yeah, we've got, at the very least, if it's not up now, it'll be up this weekend, so. Great, great. Yeah. Okay, thanks for having me, man. Merry yeah, Christmas, thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Merry man. Mithras awesome, Day. Ah, yes, yes. <laughs> Chris Bennett. And you can come and see him in person in the Urban Shaman downstairs in our building here. Gets, or at the new location, 1674 Davy Street. He's got a second location of the Urban Shaman. Oh, there's another location there. There is. Oh, perfect. The second one. Look at us go. Yeah. Now, I need some weed on that ass. Where is this weed? Hold on here. You I need some weed? My bag. I got dabs. Oh, hook it up, brother. It up. And Hashley is here. And now that the chair's all vacant over here, I don't, I'm putting her on the spot here. She was like, my hair, I don't want to... Ah. She was coming up with some excuse before, but we should bring her out here to get high. You want a bong toke? Yeah, sure. I bet Jeff will give you a dab if you ask nicely. You're From the slugger. The slugger. From the yeah. slugger. Let's get the slugger cam here. Slugger cam. And what's up, chat? Hi. Ashley, what's going on? It's been a while since you've been on the show. Look at here, Slugger Cam. I'm trying to find the Slugger Cam. It's not going here. Hold on. Here we go. Microsoft. Do your biz. Yeah. I love it. It's like the Louisville Slugger. And then you can, not only can you take a big, nice puff, but you can whack somebody pretty good with it. That's right. Yeah. Take out some haters. Take out the motherfuckers. All right. What are we smoking? Yes. <laughs> God damn. Woo. Well, that's tasty. <laughs> oh, good Lord. <coughs> so, oh, man. <coughs> I'm always incapacitated for so long after hitting that. <coughs> Dabbed. Very nice. <coughs> so, what's new with you? Sorry, I made that a little big. That was really nice, though, man. I'm going to make sure you got high. Are you... Uh, it's been a minute since 420. Are you getting ready for Christmas? Oh, <laughs> Ashley, oh, grab your microphone, too. Hi. How's and it Mark, Mark? Emery's in the house. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Mark's here, yeah. Um, hey, Mark. Let me have a... Let's do some... Scale that temperature down. Let's put a butt in there. Nice. We're, we're live on Pot TV right oh, now. I don't, I don't smoke flour through there. Oh. <laughs> Would you like a Oh, dab? you don't smoke flour? I don't. It's yeah, give Mark a dab. 
Give Mark a dab of that. Yeah, here, come snuggle up on the couch, Mark. There's lots of space here. We don't have any microphones, but you can yell into this one. Uh, why? <laughs> Great things. The Prime Minister comes to Vancouver, has a meeting at City Hall, and starts talking about how they're going to legalize it. doesn't really lay out any details, but it sounds encouraging, like he's going to take it out of the controlled drugs and uh, substances schedule and uh, leave it to the provinces and cities to regulate it, which is the best thing that a federal government can do. And he said even the municipalities could have a role in that. Yeah, well, I'm... The more people after the federal government, it's not so good because right. the federal government legalizes it and then the province will regulate it, but it's the regulations we need to worry about. Um, but, you know, there's lots of good things. Have you been talking about the Liquor Control Board proposals in Manitoba, Ontario, and B.C.? That's right. Yeah. I have an interview with Jamie Shaw today on the show. She's giving the position of Cam CD, who's against the idea of liquor stores carrying. Um, but, you know, and I had Damien Kettlewell on talking about it from the Liquor Store Association here in British Columbia, getting both sides of it. But there, Cam CD is against the idea. Well, I think that if cannabis is going to be available wherever liquor is available, that'll be a good thing, though. Because that would mean that cannabis will be sold at Rogers Arena, BC Place, every restaurant in the city, every liquor store, grocery stores that are permitted to sell, special wine tents, Oktoberfest. Um, everywhere there's a liquor license, if pot's available there, that's a lot of places. Pot. Yeah. Even coffee shops here in Vancouver now have you know, beer taps in them, all of them now. Right. And I, you know, I would welcome Starbucks and anybody else getting into the weed yeah. business. And I think a lot of those people were going to see a future, like what if Starbucks wants to sell some edibles, mm -hmm. right? Some cannabis Christmas edibles. I can see that because they're going to realize 10 to 20% of the market is going to be cannabis, you know, uh, interested audiences. You know, Eric the Suit was here earlier and he made a good point about the liquor stores. He said, you know, we've been asking for the wine model for a long time. We've, and if you look at any other regulation system of any kind of drug that's even close to marijuana, like alcohol, or tobacco, those are really the ones, I mean, of those two models, what would you rather have? You don't want to regulate it like tobacco. No, well, I want to regulate it like Starbucks, though, because yeah. caffeine is probably more dangerous than cannabis, without question. It's more addictive. Yeah. It causes ulcers, hypertension, mm -hmm. uh, deterioration of the stomach lining. Uh, sure why don't we regulate it like tomatoes? Well, it but must that's be. That's how we should It's it. a body Any altering substance, yeah, though. Yeah. It, make, it makes you more alert, makes you more awake. And uh, what is that strange sound? Gosh, that, uh, okay. That having been, okay, so, so I would say caffeine is a good role model. We don't sell caffeine to minors. Right. No one under 16 really goes into Starbucks. That's an understood right. thing. Kind of uh, the Senate said cannabis should be available to those 16 <laughs> and over, so that's consistent with Starbucks's model. Um, Starbucks has fair trade coffee from all over the world to make sure things are free of pesticides and are grown with a fair amount of the profits going to the, the, the growers. That's what we want, yeah. right? We want growers uh, compensated fairly, albeit in a legal environment. You know, it's estimated that $20,000 a metric ton, which is two cents a gram, two cents a gram, would still be profitable for Canadian farmers who have vast tracts of land. So the cost of pot could come down radically. So as long as whoever is distributing it passes those savings on to us, um, we really can't argue with who has jurisdiction, right? I, the, the, the market will be protected in fairness if everybody's allowed to grow some plants. If we can all grow plants, then pot will never be too expensive because that will be our alternative to do it. So. Anyway, Jared, it's nice to see you here. Now, when are you going to start the new Pot TV studios? We've, we've had Crop King Seeds give us this money, yep. and uh, it's looking fabulous and beautiful, but I need to ask, when, when are we doing our first show from there? It looks, wow. it looks nice in there. Yeah. Almost done. It's very close to done. I'm hoping that the f our January episodes will all be filmed in the new studio. So that would pretty much be the next episode of the show that we do. I'm hoping it's in the studio. Um, we're very close. We're so, so close. Uh, we just have a few little things left to do. And really, it's about I equipment. had a tour yesterday. It looks Did great. You? Yeah, it looks, looks good. great. We're doing a New Year's Eve show from there. Yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure if I'll be here on New Year's Eve. Oh, I, uh, I might be on the island on New Year's Eve. Um, but I might be here. <laughs> um, we'll try. That. We could still do something, even if, uh, even well, if I wasn't here. Just I have more announcements. Yeah, Dana Larson, author Eve. of uh, Green Buds and Hash <laughs> right. and Cannabis in Canada, an Illustrated History, yeah. will be at Cannabis Culture Store tomorrow at 307 West Hastings, the building we're in now. From noon to 6, autographing his books. And uh, we'll have cookies and cider and bong hits. And the book is nine ninety five, which is a fabulous price for a 140-page oversized, extensively illustrated book about our history of oh, our movement in Canada. Book. 
And, uh, but we also will be making it free for anybody who spends over 50 bucks at Cannabis Culture. And Green Buds and Hash and Cannabis in Canada will both be free if you spend over $100. Hey, so that's the deal. I'm going to run. Oh, Talk to you later. I'm going to go sell a pipe actually at the store. I was en route to selling a pipe at the store, so goodbye. Oh. <laughs> and and Merry, happy holidays and Merry Christmas to everybody out there. <laughs> Thanks. Mark Emery. Bye, Mark. The boss. Bye, love bye. you lots. <laughs> yeah. And yes, come down to 307 West Hastings and you can find the books, anything for Christmas, marijuana related, that's not the marijuana. A bong, you know you want to buy a bong and a Bongs, pipe. Bongs, tons of heady glass. That's all right. Kinds of stuff. Buy now, something nice. And even if you don't like, have get, any buy smoke, that now you can come to the mom, lounge right? and you can get dabs at the dab bar. That's right. You can get vapor bags. You can get bong tokes. Mark's oh, Mark's back. coming back. Wow. Oh, his weed. weed. He's got, <laughs> don't leave that laying around. Won't be here when you get back. That red medtainer is the one I want, though. He had the nice, like, choice medtainer. Weed is the John gift that keeps on giving, though, until the bag's gone. That's true, yeah. Right? Just, but doesn't give her that long. <laughs> <laughs> medtainers make great stocking stuffers, too. I like, used yeah. to, yeah. like... Things inside the medtainer. Yes, <laughs> yes. I used to get myself, like, the choicest bud right before Christmas, and then I'd wrap it in, like, a present to myself <laughs> and put it on a, a little tree. bow and on top. And then I'd be all stoked because I'd unwrap it at Christmas morning and be like, yes. That's a good idea. My Christmas weed like that, eh? I'm going to do I that. I was never disappointed. I was always like, yeah. you got to have Christmas weed, you gotta and be it's prepared. hard to get weed on Christmas Day if you yeah, don't well, If you don't have a good dealer, it's... Really hard. He's like busy. Yeah, you know, he's, I'm sorry, like he's doing his Christmas, Christmas supper and stuff. Yeah, yeah man. Deal yeah, yeah, every, even your dealer Unless has a mom hardcore. and a dad. Yeah, right? that's right. So <laughs> <laughs> depends on how long you've been in the game. Like, that's why you I could get weed. Own, everyone, I could get weed on Christmas now. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I'm sure somebody would <laughs> deliver saying, now. <laughs> uh, in Vancouver, you could. Yeah. The dispensaries are probably all I'm open on that day. I'm in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and I can get weed on Christmas. <laughs> or you can come see me and probably get weed on Christmas. <laughs> I'm coming to you for weed on Christmas. <laughs> it was the greatest when I had my cup. Um, Greg uh, Greg Williams, marijuana man, came for first time and. Um, he bought some weed for me. He was like, you know where to get some weed, Jeff? I was like, yes, I do. Because <laughs> usually it's the some. other way, right? Yeah. Usually it's the other way. So. Um, yeah, and the cup was awesome this year. And the cup was great. Yeah, we haven't really, I don't think, maybe we have hung out in person since then. Yeah, we have. I can't yeah. remember now. Yeah, we have. Down in the end of October. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Cuptober. That's right. We did a whole the, Cuptober yeah, deal. Yeah, the, the cup silliness. <laughs> yeah, I know. So many cups. So many cups. How many cups can one cup man have in a cup year? <laughs> yeah, and then there was maybe next. And then everybody like out. rolled out, and there was a bunch of other cups. There was uh, there was the Canafest there in Prague, and then everybody was in yeah. Chile, and then oh geez, there was Jamaica going on there high times too. So, but I heard that kind of flopped a little. I don't know. I didn't hear. High Times doesn't put much effort into anything. You know, I heard it's that hard the to other support people kind of, it was their event more than even the High Times event. Like the cannabis, or the Roots uh, people, or whoever it was. Right, right, right. Yeah, would, yeah okay. Well, that would have been better then, for sure. Yeah, you know, uh, High Times, it's funny with High Times, because I think they do a well, very like good job of two things. One is the night where the music is playing, and they have the musical venue. They have a good act. It's well put together. The stage show's great. It looks good good venue usually that I, to the ones I've been and the booklet that they put together about all the coffee shops across Amsterdam when I went to yeah the, that was a good book that was a dope little book and it has yeah. all this information the coffee shop crawl tour thing that's pretty fucking dope but the thing it's that was expensive. the shits it's expensive though because you have to buy all your own weed the euro converts real bad usually so no what a, yeah that's and a then the weather is shit in Amsterdam in November yeah. And I mean, after 28 years, they abandoned it anyways. They never even went back. So, yeah. you know, well, is, is Jamaica really going to take off for them? You think they'll be in but one, another one next year? I fucked up the expo, though, when I was there. It was the, sh the worst expo I've ever seen. Dude, the first year yeah. I went, they got raided. Yeah, by the cops. The 24th were there. annual. And it was in like a fucking. I want to go to Amsterdam my whole life to go to the Cannabis Cup. Ever since I was the first a pothead, they go to the cup and they get raided. Cops raid it. <laughs> wow. Oh it was the craziest shit I you. ever seen. No, and you know, the even crazier is the venue that they pick for this thing, and it was maybe because of the raid, but it was like a, I swear it was like a World War II munitions factory. And it smelled like motor oil. Oh, that was after. That yeah. was the year after the raid. Yeah, it was like a boat factory or we, something we were in. Yeah, they have <laughs> raves and shit there. Yeah. <laughs> that place was run down. There was like there, leaking water all in, all over everybody's stuff. There was this big concrete, <laughs> like, kind of dip in the ground. So they, like, <laughs> yeah. threw these old, like, 
carpets in there and tried to like cover it up. <laughs> it was not good. Yeah, it was pretty ghetto. So that went on for a couple of years there. And then uh, last year, I didn't go after that because um, they didn't have a venue spot. I just, I wasn't going that year. Well, so. the, the second year, the venue spot got canceled while we were there and they didn't have an expo. <laughs> yeah, that was just, uh, yeah. not this past year, the year before. That was nuts. So. But yeah, so yeah, that was the last time I was there. And then they just abandoned. This year didn't yeah. happen at all. They went to Negril instead. Yeah, so. Jamaica. Well, or so yeah. They did what they could. Yeah, oh, they do what they can. Yeah. I mean, a big international event like that would be uh, hard to host, right? Yeah. And, and believe it or not, there's coffee shops that are closing down all over Amsterdam right now. So I got my friend still lives there. And, yeah. And uh, there's because of the shortage and the new laws, because they just changed things where you can't buy grow equipment there anymore and they changed some other laws a lot of them want to close and you can't sell liquor at them it's because they used to be able to sell liquor and that was where they made a lot of money and so they had to choose do you want to be a liquor place or do you want to be a, a if weed you, place if you <clears throat> want to enjoy cannabis in europe i think spain is probably the best place you go I, some of the most delicious uh flour and concentrates and hash i smoked when i was in barcelona i'm so excited to go back to spanibus for 2016 here in march like that's my big trip this year so but the thing about Spain is that it's all behind closed doors, though. And it's like you don't even, unless you well, know just somebody. A matter, I think it's a matter of time. <clears throat> like the two best it's places. It's not open to the public, though. You know? Well, I mean, uh, we're the public. Yeah. I seem pretty open. Well, well, yeah. we have, we, you have to sign up. You can't just stumble by and be like, hey, there's a thousand weed shops I can live walk there, into. But if you live there, it's different. Yeah. Right? People live there, and once you're part yeah. of one you collective, to sign up then at all you can actually get involved. Into the in, other ones? Yeah, for sure you can. Yeah. You think you would put that on silent by now? No. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley's got her like super alarm going. That's how. Is that how you wake up in the morning? No, the it's, super uh, alarm. it's just. Uh, I think it's Johnny. He's trying to contact me. Oh, it's Johnny B. So I uh, haven't, John, we haven't talked about Johnny B. John Johnny B. Broke, broke his, his elbow. Elbow. So Johnny B, we love you. We if love you're out there watching Johnny, the show right now. Hope you're okay. Um, he hasn't. He said he's coming messages. down. He said he he's did. still coming here. He's still gonna come. So, yeah. Oh, that's so, awesome. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, broken wing gonna the, come. The surgeon talking to the doctor. Uh, Add on another surgery. Uh, poor, poor John. Guy, man. <laughs> wow. Up with this guy. Lots of cannabis for him. John B for the chat broken. There. Oh, that's cool. There's Vic BC Vape Stoner is putting in marijuana joints. Marijuana oh. cigarettes, we call them, uh, I, into the chat. We're smoking them then. Nice. Yeah, we should puff those. Good. Light them up. Spark them. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, I do have a video to play of Jamie Shaw from the Canadian Association of Medical Cannabis Dispensaries, CAMCD. And uh, this is an interview that she is basically arguing against the liquor store model. Now, I don't agree with that Mark. liquor store model either. No. No. Yeah. We could just open stores instead. I think so. Why? Yeah. See, I. We already have head shops. I think so. If why they can't the put, head shops just migrate into? Yeah, they selling? can sell them at head they shops. They should put dispensaries inside of BCLs, like like have like BCL, but then have like a section that's well, like the that's recreational dispensary. That's kind of what they would do. You would imagine. I doubt they'll you know? integrate it completely. Like, yeah, I think that's what they have in mind. It'll be like those little, you know, McDonald's in a Walmart or whatever. Or like the Starbucks inside <laughs> of Safeways. Exactly. Yes. And See, I, that to I me think isn't so bad. That's a great idea, personally, yeah. because I mean, you can. I'm not against your liquor, the idea. As long as I can grow my own weed at home for medicinal purposes or any other real reason, that I'm. It's simple to me. If they, do whatever if, they want. If it's a monopoly and they're the only ones that are allowed to do it, then I'm against the idea. Yeah, well, don't we have video to well. talk about that too? With Justin claiming it's not going to be a monopoly. Well, Justin here is saying it's not going to be a money grab. He didn't say it's not going to be a, a local monopoly, though. Well, how the fuck? What's the difference between the two? Well, if you're um, monopolizing, you're money grabbing. Well, see, he's saying that the government isn't going to be money grabbing because they're not going to tax it. So he was talking about taxes. He said you don't want to overtax it. So what? We let the privatization. Like people who just open up and go at the industry allowed to set the prices. Yeah, he's kind of you, you know, get what you get across the street. The guy that who's could got still be clean, supportive of the, the guy LPs. who's got a clean record, but he doesn't know anything about the game. Yeah. Like you know, that's like getting prairie plant systems to grow your fucking weed in a mine. Yeah, somehow that's just not gonna work out real fucking well. I hope that that's not going to be the system. But. Am I the only one <laughs> that sees the failure no, that's coming? It's gonna. It, it'll. Uh, yeah. Well, I, no, I, I don't think it's going to be that this time around. I have a feeling that. Uh, what about all the rest like, of it? And I'm going to get the video up of Justin talking about it here. Um, this is like, we we seem to like start having this patient divided between LPs, 
And you got to remember, anybody getting signed up currently has to be forced on to the existing new program, right? Which is, you know, nobody, unless you're part of the court injunction, is caught up in that. So you're struck at being, if you are being signed up tomorrow by a doctor, you're looking at the new program, which means it's going to limit you to those LPs. So whether or not people want to admit that we're where we are with it, um, the LPs to some degree are a necessity because they haven't changed the program back to what it could or should be. Yeah. And you can't expect the government that doesn't even see marijuana as a medicine considering to make rules and regulations around any of it that makes sense. So no. now what the fuck is well, Justin and the crew going to do? It sounds like, <laughs> now there's a video also of Justin showing up here in the city of Vancouver and hanging with our mayor, Gregor Robertson, and it was just a handsome fest with those two guys together. Did you see it? It was like, um, it was like a their GQ hair, photo shoot their hair or something. Is so beautiful. Yeah, I know. Both of them their together, I was so like, beautiful. oh, all of a sudden I felt faint. They like glow. Their <laughs> aura like, is, like a, is like a shining yeah. yellow glow. All these young girls started screaming on the street and running after them, waving for autographs and stuff. And wow, it was just crazy. It's like Beatles. Little celebrities. It's like Beatlemania. <laughs> yeah. They roll with Justin Bieber. What, what up? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> JT is bringing sexy back. That's right. Yeah. So the mayor's oh gonna God. drop it like it's hot. Yeah, the mayor, you know, he's a DJ, so he could back him up. I think Justin could like <laughs> sing or rap, and Gregor could like Gregor mix it up just on the ones and twos. Just spin it hard. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, that'd be pretty dope. He could spin That's it hard. It'd be like you could call them the Handsomes. And they're all Canadian <laughs> the too, handsomes. hey? That's right. Yeah. One hundred percent Canadian yeah, bread. That's a real right. Canadian show right there. I like it. Yeah, that's Canadian content. The Justin that's Trudeau hip hop tour. Get Drake's. <laughs> Get Drake's. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. He could snowboard in. Drake is back up. <laughs> <laughs> he was a snowboard instructor. <laughs> he was also an actor. Was he? Was he? I don't know. Trudeau. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I was talking about Trudeau. I thought you, Gregor <laughs> probably was. <laughs> what? I don't know what Gregor was, but He's I thought a Gregor method actor. I thought Gregor in high was, school in drama. Wasn't Gregor a pot grower? <laughs> he had oh. to have been. I didn't say that. Does he know how to grow weed? Uh, I wouldn't say anything about it. I don't know. I don't know any information about anything like that. Is that like the Gregor fatty? You know, like Nobody I smoked does. the Gregor weed. Now there's there's always these rumors that Gregor is a pot grower from some island. <laughs> He's just a madman <laughs> in his basement, just growing and, bad. He's like, way to go, Gregor. Yeah. We salute well, you. Well, where did he get all that money for Happy Planet? <laughs> <laughs> On his, his own Happy company. Planet. Yeah, it's delicious. I'm just that is totally welcome not to true. my grow I have room. No idea if any of that's true. <laughs> I would never speculate. We could never speculate. No. We could make fun. I would never, never, never. make. Never speculate. Never. Um, okay, let's play this <laughs> video and watch what Justin says about it ain't a money grab. He Let says we're not going to be looting show, the pot smokers. <laughs> we are having fun today. <laughs> okay, enjoy. Have fun with this. The big reason um, we uh, chose to uh, commit to controlling and regulating marijuana uh, is to keep young people safe. Um, right now, Canada has the highest... Uh, use of uh, marijuana by underage uh, people in the uh, developed world. Uh, we need to make sure we're keeping our kids safe and keeping our community safe by removing the black market and the uh, criminal gangs and street organizations from it. Um, the fact is uh, that if you tax it too much, as we saw with cigarettes, uh, you end up with uh, driving things towards a black market, which will not keep Canadians safe, uh, particularly young Canadians. Uh, so, uh, yes, there's a potential for a bit of revenue on that, but we're certainly not looking for a, a windfall. And uh, it is our, certainly our thought that money that comes in should go towards uh, addiction treatment and uh, uh, mental health support and, uh, and education programs rather than uh, you know, financing general revenue. Uh, it's, it was never uh, about a money maker. It was always about uh, public health, public safety. So there you go. It's not about making money it's about public safety protecting the kids oh that's their big bullshit i know because marijuana is such an epidemic for the kids well, right now if it doesn't if it doesn't kids have kids are dying left uh, and right if it doesn't have a toxicity rate right and nobody's died from it <coughs> and we need cannabidiol if you understand how your android cannabinoid system works then you actually need all that then how, how the fuck is it bad for you to consume it as a kid? But I like, Just you know, take the psychotropic uh, of THC <laughs> effects out of it then, 
give them high doses of CBD and CBN. You just ever you'd have healthy people then. And but they you don't know, want that shit. To me, it's children. brilliant anyways. I don't care that they don't say that. The kids. Even though it's disingenuous, I don't care that they say it because the, you know who he's saying that for? He's saying that for grandma but there's who's all upset about weed and shit. But that's the problem no is there's people that don't that, know any better. No, but he's series know how weed you're... with Sanjay Gupta on CNN. There's yeah. like weed, weed yeah, too, yeah. and the third one. That yeah, is like the series. best way to educate yourself yeah. on how marijuana is healthy. But we have to accept that, pe- that there's people it. out there that are too ignorant and you can't teach them how. It's about but a, what it's I like a doctor. Though, what I like is that it turns it turns the whole idea that marijuana is dangerous to the kids. Yeah, on its head. So people who are like, "Oh, that marijuana, it's gonna be," you know, the kids are gonna, argue, they're gonna get it. Well, no, Justin's arguing that <coughs> by legalizing it, the kids aren't gonna get it, I'm aware. which is true too. So I don't think it's hey, hey, bad. listen, listen. They, <laughs> they, they made alcohol with a legal age limit, but when they do the stats on how many people consume it in Canada, they include fifteen-year-olds. <coughs> Me and Greg were just talking I about know. this today. That's so funny, right? Uh, so th- that's what I'm saying. Like we all know <laughs> that. So the same is going to apply, kids are still gonna get especially weed. if you, you put it in a liquor weird. store. We all know right? this, and like nothing's going to change. Like about the marijuana kids. man says, they the don't. Will probably get They don't more. stop anybody from, you know. You know, like there's <coughs> kids in the parking lot all day trying to get somebody to buy them booze. Nobody yeah. goes out there and says, hey, don't do that. You know Nobody what? Nobody arrests the person or finds the person that actually does do it so when it, they find somebody. So there's the possibility that it will decrease to kids because it's harder for kids to get liquor than it is to get weed. Right. They now. seem to have no problem getting liquor, too, though. So well, I never had a problem getting liquor. Inc- that's what I'm saying. When I was a kid, they, I could get all kinds of shit. That's what I'm so saying. Like, who couldn't, too? Right? I mean, you go to fucking high school, there's kids everywhere with shit. How about proper education? Like, we raise our children with proper <laughs> drug education. I was education. just about to say that. It all right? comes down to education and how you educate you exp- your children and how you tell them it's a medicine. And that and should happen with inside a family. That's, that should happen with inside the family structure. I where think the parents take their time to explain to their children what drugs do and what they can do. The best thing you when can I do. When I was growing up, drugs were just wrong and bad. Yeah. And like that's like fucked up when you actually try a little bit of weed and find out it's not that bad. The problem with doing that is you tell somebody that weed is as bad as heroin and they find out that weed isn't that bad, they go, well, maybe they were lying to me about the hair on. You know what you can Next do? Thing, you know, you're getting you should invite up Pam McCall too. over. Oh, let sh- her talk to the kids. Pam, She'll set them straight. We have, a, we, have a, we have a solution. <laughs> Pam just needs a little dick in her <laughs> life. And oh, I'm willing. Uh, yeah. I, I've had this conversation. I'm willing, Pam. This is an open invitation. I'm willing... To straight go on a date with you and fucking He's feed you the hard <laughs> ass fat lump dick if you just back the fuck off us potheads, man. <laughs> if she's willing to take one, I'm, te- I'm willing to That's go down us. like that. Jeff, we wouldn't ask you. We couldn't ask you to do Pam something like that. Pam is a hateful, no be... getting dick no, no, bitch <laughs> that needs to take a day off. And man, I'm <laughs> telling funny. you, man, like if she just smoked a little after <laughs> I pound her out, we'll get high. And she'll be different, man. She'll be different. We'll all be different. Pam It'll be a great like, time. You know what she me reminds me of? Me and Pam open a dispensary. Ever, remember the uh, the sketches of... Uh, wow, Jeff. Remember That's all there. for Freddie Pritchard, by there. the way. I have dropped all that just for Freddie. <laughs> I love that guy. <laughs> Did you see the meme I gave him? It was all about no. her. Yeah. <laughs> Freddie started posting memes. She's got... She's holding a big chunk of shot. Her eyes are all red. She's like, I only smoked the fire, right? <laughs> So I made my own meme about her. <laughs> Won't need a little dick. I did see that one. That was funny. I didn't. We see love yours. you, Pam. Love you, Pam. Yes, please take my date. Yeah. I'm only in Vancouver like once every three months. So <laughs> what's the you chat? Call her up. We should that? proposition. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chat's probably going nuts. Uh, Rona Ambrose. Yeah, she needs a date too. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Would you do? What about people? her? Would you? Would you That's take him on a double a date, the two of them together? I think I'd. I think I'd let. <laughs> <laughs> <You wanna? laughs> the health minister, right? I think I'd let her Rona. watch. I think I let her She's watch. She's the head of the conservative party now. I'd let her watch. I'd give her a dildo and let her watch. <laughs> <How'd> that happen. <laughs> she this took is, over Harper's job. This is getting obscene. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, she. She yeah. took over Harper's job. She's in charge of the party. Interim leader, though. So. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna find somebody else. Well, yeah, they usually find somebody else. They're gonna She's clone just... Harper. And yeah, bring yeah, they wouldn't back. let a woman run the party. <laughs> no, they're gonna clone Harper. Those conservatives. Hey now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm obviously joking, but I'm, I was, joking. I'm pointing out that they're conservative minded. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah, they're like you know, I'm, they wouldn't let. You know, 
They, they might. Who they sits might at let, the head of the conservative table now just, that there is no conservative table? They're a little old school, you could say. Oh, you think? Behind the school. times. They're like cavemen. We don't, we don't think anything critically through, but we'll balance out a budget, no problem. Yeah, right. But they I'm don't, telling you, it comes to social programs. Any, fucking idiots. They spend more money than any other party, though. The con, the well, Canadian it's easy to spend. We've had this conversation, con, too. What, it's easy to spend your money. There's nothing conservative about them Bro, in any way. if you way. give me 20 bucks, I'll go spend it right now. It's easy to spend your money. Yeah. Of course, it's easy for the government to spend more money yeah, every year. It's ours. they give it to their corporate buddies. And they give, you know, that's really their job. The conservative job was to funnel profits or tax dollars from the citizens into the hands of private wealth. That's what they exist to do. Neil? What's that's up, essentially Neil their entire... Pro- that is what the conservatives exist to Absolutely. do. Absolutely. And that's what pretty much all government exists to do right now, is to move funds from... Our, gov- our social hands from everybody together, the like big common funds into the hands of private wealth systems. Make but, us like Mexico. 2016, like, uh, you know, they're, they're all out for uh, winter session, so everybody's off on Christmas holidays. So Justin's out touring around because nobody's in cabinet. So 2016, when everybody reconvenes, like, we're going to really see what happens. You know, it's okay for them to be making jokes, uh, standing and doing their poems and all that bullshit. But let's see some results. Promises that were made during campaign. Where are the laws being changed? Where are the police being told to stop arresting dispensaries and raiding places? Uh, seems like the, uh, the Vancouver Police Department has tamed down on their actions. But what does that stay for 420 and things to come for next year? I mean, 2016 is really going to lay a path for where everybody stands on the issue and where what rights are actually going to be and what regulations are actually going to be. Yeah. So. You know, there's a... It's kind of a weird battle that's going on across the whole country right now. It's like, is Trudeau behind the police doing this? Is this the police doing it themselves? Can Trudeau stop it? Can't he? Now, there's a lawyer that I covered this in a couple. There's a few articles on the front page of Cannabis Culture that I wrote yesterday. Um, One talks about how a lawyer recently in Victoria said that Trudeau should be able right now to put a moratorium or should stop the arrest. He said if there's even the idea that they're going to legalize marijuana and make it a, you know, as a policy, they should have a moratorium against new arrests happening. What's the pur- purpose of having new arrests? It does nothing. There is no purpose, especially if they're going to abolish it. Yeah. So how about the just make how about we just be change, change the law so they do, so the police don't have the power anymore. Yeah. Trudeau or they like could I do said, that right now. Take their They could deschedule away. it as well. They could just take it off the schedule, making it not a criminal. Well, like I said, they're not even enforced. in session. So yeah, it's like gonna, it ain't gonna happen. Yeah. That's the problem. We have the well, bureaucrats fighting the laws and the regulations of the other people backing up those same laws and then justifying that their existence of those laws are okay for them to do what they do. And I think that Justin can do what? it. I don't think it has to be in session anyways. I don't think it has to be legislated. I believe that these are things that Justin can do without legislation. As well, if he, had, if he had the power as the prime minister, then why hasn't it happened? I guess he's just waiting for some reason. Maybe he's waiting for a justice failing. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm Allard. done waiting. <laughs> Maybe they're waiting for each other. Allard's waiting, or Phelan's waiting for Trudeau. Trudeau's waiting for Phelan. I'm waiting for Pam. <laughs> <laughs> we should get like a Kickstarter or like some sort of like online fund to get behind that whole thing so you can take her out on a really nice date. You know? Help help Jeff yeah, take help, Pam on yeah. a date. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. You could like take her on a, on, on could take her on a weed cruise. Her oh, I'd take her on the weed cruise. They do that. Camera. Yeah. Oh, for sure I'd take her on the weed cruise. Yeah. Absolutely. Or on like an ayahuasca trip or something. Take her on an ayahuasca session. Open her mind. Open yeah. her mind. That's what she really needs. You're going snowboarding, aren't or you? Or you take her on a date. No, if you take her on a date, you have to Fun, dose buddy. her with LSD. Well, I'm everywhere at 10, buddy. <laughs> It's all over. I'll be here. No, you have to dose her with LSD if you take her on a date. You have to slip. See, that would be more like a Dana Larson date. Like if Dana <laughs> yeah. took Pam, she they do LSD. They could go drive around. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, in the backyard. I'm like more like edibles kind of guy. Like we'll do like thirty candy dose caps, some edibles, thirty candy caps each, or and maybe like a couple, a couple of them Butter like King that. shakes, and we'll hit a few dispensaries around town. No, she'd probably. F- I get a limo. This is what I do. I get a limo, hit a few dispensaries, a couple lounges. To get a nice and baked, you know, 
maybe some munchies because she hadn't really experienced that, right? <laughs> Since like That's early like university years, right? Yeah. And then, you know, and the weed probably wasn't all that good back then when she yeah. tried to talk a little bit. No. Right? And you can just entice her and be like, look, they're. Well, I'll just take her out and introduce yeah. her to Ramo and we'll get her a little UBC and get she'll it, be roll her up rock, in those big little rock star joints. Oh, yeah. About two, three of those and she'll no, be ready you just for dinner. Make sure you have a vaporizer and a bong in the back of the, in the limo. Right. Yeah, we'll stop right. at a dispensary quick, get her a diagnosis so we can have a license. Yes. Right? She'll be, we'll make sure you're safe, no, Pam. You can have we don't Santa's want you to get in pipe. trouble. Santa's pipe for her. Because you know she wrote that book? That's how she originally got famous was Santa's writing, pipe? A, writing a kid's book without Santa's pipe in it. it was, she was like retelling the story of whatever, Silent Night the without his... The corn cob pipe. Yeah. She okay, I didn't know that. She took Santa the corn cob pipe out of it. Santa has yeah, yeah. a special corn cob pipe because oh. obviously Santa likes to, you know, medicate. Okay, so we'll get her a corn cob. Yeah. And pack that full of some fat ass goodness, yeah. green goodness. That's right. And then I think, uh, like, you know, somewhere real nice, like, you know, a nice steak place, like Black and Blue or, you know. Yeah. You can take her to Gotham. Red Gotham. Lobster. No. I, I know, really, I really, really shore really up and take her to, you know, Gotham, like, yes. um, I don't know, White Spot. <laughs> I, somewhere really nice. Red Robin. Mega I mean, Ill Pizza. I'd treat her. So, <laughs> take her to Mega Ill. That'd right? Be great. And then we'd end the night off with, like, a nice walk around Stanley Park or maybe over Lionsgate and. And back to the hotel room or her place. I don't I, you know. Yeah. Shit. That'd be It'd a, be romantic. So it would be. How could you not want that? Like, Well, who would say no to that, it. Jeff? She's just missing it. Who would it. say no to that? So, yes, the go fun <laughs> fat lump. The go fun fat lump to yeah. take Pam McCall on That's a right. date. That's right. We need a Kickstarter or a go fun me. That's right. The go fun fat lump Somebody page. please set this up. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And we can like <clears throat> we'll Photoshop I'm telling you, she'll happens. back it's off. To be filmed. She back off. That's a, I put my seal, fat llama seal of approval on that. <laughs> as right? soon as that happens, you think she'll change her home? She story? will. She'll be. How can we be? How can it guarantee though that you know just get? She'll be part of the team. Be, she'll be part of the team. She'll be here. You like think the she's next a little day. sexually frustrated, is what you're trying to say. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And she needs to relax. Like anybody who's that pent up at weed heads hasn't smoked any in a long time and hasn't gotten fucked in a long time so <laughs> i just really feel sorry for her and i want to help him i'm a compassionate person you are and nobody can say that i am not you're very giving i am yeah and i want to give to pam in a special way <laughs> <laughs> don't judge me I'm not judging you. I'm just... it's pretty terrible yeah, you and pod tv land i'm trying to help i'm trying to help can't wait. Oh man, I've had fun. We've had fun and this silly. This has been today. a good show. It's been a great show. Yeah. It has been. Um, what else are we? What are we talking about now? Okay, wait. There, I have another video to play. What's this? I'm gonna do one? another dab. Oh, uh, the other video is. Yeah, this one oh, the two handsomes, the the ridiculously good-looking politicians in charge of our country play a video about country my, and our about prompts. my shop? You got one of those too, don't you? I'm a video about your shop. Yeah, the one that Tommy had showed you. Um, which one? Uh, the one where we oh, they did yeah, all the, yeah. Uh, yeah. they brought, they showed he up all the we did the, it. Oh, it's online. It's online. Yeah. But where did he, where is it online? Uh, I don't know. I thought you guys had worked that out earlier. <clears throat> I think I can find it. All right. We may have a video Pretty to show sure. that we oh, no, shot we at the do. Shop. We do. We it's the do. Heady Hikes video. Tommy's Heady Hikes video. That's right. Oh. Which I haven't seen yet myself. It's pretty funny. Oh, There's some awesome. references There's some to my nipples. Uh, oh. Glass yeah. in that video. Me being silly. Nothing Again, wrong with that. I was really yeah. high. Some references is, to your oh, nipples. Is there, is, is the, uh, it's not really a is the you and Ryan show without that nipple thing in there. Yeah, in the video. I the, asked the, them to the originally. You, the you in the little. Yeah, I asked them to originally <laughs> edit it out, but apparently it just. No, it, it made it. Uh, yeah, I, it was in there. Yeah. I see. Yeah, it. they. <laughs> went, no, you can't ask to anything edit out with these guys. Oh uh, well, some people. I can't speak okay. right now either. For nothing wrong with a little editing. I think I'm really high. Oh, me too. That was a nice dab. Dab time. Dab time. Okay, now we have success here. This is a big window. That's a lot of handsome there in that window. Okay, here Pod TV. JT and GR in Vancouver talking about weed. And look at Gregor in this video. He looks like he's been smoking a little too much. I think he had a couple extra dabs right before this, too. Because I think when... Uh, when J JT throws he, him the he ball, he kind of stumbles a little bit. He's like, oh. he just, yeah. He's like, what? Oh, yeah. Gregor just cropped, he just cropped off, yeah. right? Yeah, he's so all So you know he wanted fingers. to try it before. Yeah. yeah. So that's why. Like, yeah. yeah, he's like looking a little roasted. He's just a little off his game, yeah. right? <laughs> it's funny. Check it. Here it is. Enjoy. 
It's still a spinning wheel. There it is. Come on. Obviously, uh, the criminal code uh, will need to be adjusted if we're going to control and regulate, uh, and that's something that the federal government will do. But when it comes to uh, distribution, uh, when it comes to uh, selling and engaging, obviously the provinces and indeed the municipalities will have to be an integral part of that discussion. And we, we're expecting there to be uh, different perspectives and different solutions put forward uh, across the country by various municipalities and provinces. And uh, the challenge of getting this important initiative right uh, is one of ensuring that we are broadly listening to uh, partners, to uh, folks from the medical marijuana industry, to uh, municipal partners, to uh, provinces. Uh, and, of course, drawing on best practices from around the world. That's why we are uh, ensuring that we're going to get this right. Uh, we're going to get this right in a way that suits uh, Canadians broadly and specifically in their communities, uh, and why we're taking the time to uh, weigh in properly and, uh, and ensure that we're achieving our goals of protecting our young people uh, and uh, removing the criminal uh, profits uh, from marijuana. Yeah, we, Vancouver, we share the, those same goals uh, to make sure uh, our kids are safer and that uh, there is uh, a smart uh, way to manage uh, a, the situation. We've had to undertake uh, regulation of the dispensaries uh, because there was no uh, thoughtful uh, controls coming from Ottawa historically. So it's uh, a relief to hear uh, Prime Minister's commitment, along with the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, uh, they'll be working on uh, this partnership to ensure we have a smart and effective way to regulate uh, marijuana. And as partners on the ground uh, in cities, uh, we'll, we'll do our share, uh, taking the learnings that we've had uh, with uh, the dispensaries here in Vancouver, but uh, ensuring that we have a, a very uh, thoughtful system going forward. All right, we're back. So there you go. Let's watch how we regulate it here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, his re form of regulation is remove all of them except for eight. That's Gregor's. <coughs> They're what dealt the with control. it very responsibly by um, re saying we're going to close all of them except for eight. Eight, which none of that's happened yet. No, but a lot, of them, a lot more than eight will eventually be open, hopefully. It's just that eight of them only pass the first round. <clears throat> that means... <coughs> They have six months, all of we them, need to jump through the other hoops that they're supposed to. We need of them. Yeah, we, I want... Wasn't there like, just like 100 recently? Like more than like Tim Hortons? 100, there's 170 applications. Yeah, but they've only approved eight? I think eight? 120 actual physical locations. And are they actually getting that the day, 30... Like, are they getting that 30G application? Uh, yeah, that's part Some of it. Some extortion shit right there. 30 Gs. That's fucked up. That ain't cheap, though. But, you know... These dispensaries will probably be able to rake it in. Yeah, but that's that's a, that's a big problem. It's I'm a, not saying it's a good thing. No. Everybody else pays less, so what the fuck? You go Every, to the street and get it less. Yeah. Well, yeah. People. Mm, I don't think people should jump through the hoops of the regulations. I is, think they should. Is that mean just we, stay open and not close down? Is that where maybe we should just all go back to straight black market stuff? Well, sure. But don't that make sucks, enough money though. that way. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. Well, I want I like being able to go to the store and get it, even though I don't have my medical card now anymore. But I had it for a little while there, <laughs> even though there's nothing wrong. But with I mean, me. that, I've always had a problem with classing this class over here and this class over here is two different. You, you're recreational, you're medicinal. Even if you use the plant recreational, you still get medicinal benefits from it because it's awesome for you. So yeah. <laughs> like you I, can't separate separate the two. No, you and can't. And then I mean, anybody who wasn't really. really really sick and was just the weed head, and then they were managed to use the system to their advantage. I right? think like, re medical is recreational and vice versa. Exactly. Yeah. So there's no argument with it. Yeah, you it need to be, be have recreation to be healthy. You need that's to right. like relax. That's right. Chill the fuck out. That's right. Not be all stressed out. And that's how you, you know, get de-stressed, and that's part of recreation. That's you go on vacation as a stress reliever, as a medical thing. So right. you know, why is smoking weed not a medical thing? It doesn't hurt you. Drinking can't be a medical thing. It can if you have a couple glasses of wine, but if you get loaded, then it negates the benefits. I agree. Yeah. Everything in moderation. Yeah. Even though I do like getting sauced here and there. A little bit of sauce. But, you know, I like some sauce. Eric is in the house and now out the house. house? 
He's out of the house. He gone. He, that's better than being in the outhouse. Anyways. When I first met Redbeard, it was up at the Glass Gathering the first year I went, and he said, the very first thing he said to me, he said, well, it's nice to meet you, Fat Lum. And there's a lovely, comfortable outhouse <laughs> just right over there. There's the outhouse. And I, I looked at him, I said, I don't think comfortable and outhouse should be <laughs> two words that go together, <laughs> bro. He's like, well, you'll find it. It's nice and comfy, so the floor is a little squishy. He said, try not to fall through. That, ho- that outhouse is... <laughs> yeah, the floor, he wasn't lying. The floor was a little squishy. That outhouse is now the tool shed. It's where you find the rakes and the shovels. That would shit. be a bad fall. Would have been for me. It would be for anybody. <laughs> but, I mean, it, w- it would have been, yeah, probably a little... But, like I said, only a hippie like Redbeard <laughs> would think that an outhouse could be comfortable. But Milner as well. He does so. live with goats. True this. True Anybody this. who lives with goats probably thinks and that, that I, That's a shout out, a uh, reminder for the shout 100th out. episode tomorrow. Tomorrow, Redbeard's 100th, 100th episode. episode. And, um, wow, 100 episodes of the Redbeard show. That's right. Shit, you know, it reminds me, I was supposed and to count what episode we're on, because I, I think we're up around who knows what. I don't know what episode you're on. I don't either. It's I gotta, there. I got to figure that out. I've been on the show like a, <laughs> a lot of times. Many times. <laughs> you might be our number one guest of on repeat occurrences besides any locals. Well, that's like just of, I come of down an here outside the city person. I just like being here. Yeah, you're on a lot, which <laughs> is great. Because you're you get out of Saskatoon more than people get out of their homes, though mostly. I you know, can. people in Toronto don't really get out much. Gotta, can't stay in one place all the time, bro. That's true. Saskatoon's too little. It's like people, you know, a little chilly there all all year long. It's cold. Like, yeah. <laughs> I got some growing to do in Mexico, like next month sometime. Ah. Uh, yeah, really? back to look look uh, for some stuff on Facebook. I'll be th- uh, putting my videos of. Uh, growing in Mexico up, so Mexico grow. Yeah, that's right. I've been for those who don't know, I've been producing marijuana now in Mexico for the last like five years. What I did not know that. Yeah, mo- a lot of people don't. So, <laughs> well, I've nice. been helping a friend develop and uh, grow down there, uh, helping them uh, stabilize their strain line and set up greenhouses and uh, improve their indoor operations and stuff like that. So it's amazing uh, growing down in the Yucatan, and uh, I've had a lot of fun there. And now that they've uh, decriminalized for personal consumption and uh, production, uh, puts us in a really good place, and I'm excited to see what's going to go down when I get there this year. So mid-January, and then there'll be some exciting episodes of Growing in Mexico probably coming in February from me. That's awesome, man. Yeah, and then February and March, I'm down in Barcelona for uh, Spanibus, and super excited for my second year back to Spanibus, and... That'll be my big international uh, event this year, and the return for that. And then I don't know what else there is for 2016. It's gonna Spanibus be fun. is so dope. Yeah, and then, of course, we'll be down. We're doing a tour for Yellow Sky, because we're uh, releasing his album uh, in February, late February, early March. And then we're touring in April, uh, starting in Toronto for uh, the 420 celebration with Matt Marna. Oh, Shout yeah. out to all my friends in Toronto. And yes. so we're starting there, and then we're working our way all the way back to the glass gathering in Canada Day here, and it's going to be fun. Dope. I'm excited. 2016 is going to be a good year. I believe it will be. Yeah. It's going to be. I'm going to get my date with year. Pam, and yeah, you and Pam are going to. That could even happen that? before Christmas. The help go fun lum to yeah, take Pam ne- a call. Yeah, Neil, we need your help. This oh, is a Neil very. Missed all that. He would have liked that. Yeah, this is. Go a, back and watch the episode. Cause, Neil, pretty funny. That I think you can get behind. I, um, we figured the best way to sort of declaw Pam McCall and deactivate her activism is that nope. she has to go on a I'm date. I'm gonna give her the D. <laughs> I C K. He's taking R. her out on a date. <laughs> Yeah, I want to. So we're starting to go fund so love to, to take Pam McCall on a date. We need to raise some funds. Okay, I'm so gonna he can get take her, her out on a limo. F- yeah, take her a bunch of dispensaries. You know, make get her pizza a, for supper. Thing of roses, you know. That's right, chocolates. Dozen we, roses. You know, medible chocolates. We'll get Fredable to make <laughs> medible chocolates. That's right, and then we'll and then I'm gonna take her to the hotel. We'll get a nice hotel, and I'm gonna make sure that woman can't walk straight for a few mm-hmm. days. And he's gonna I, he's gonna I have the bondage she equipment. Will be a diff- what she needs. Yeah. She will be a different woman when she comes back, <laughs> loving and caring. And I'm gonna change you, Pam. <laughs> it's like that scene I've, from so Straight Outta Compton. So I've officially asked her on a date on the show today. Uh, it was very nice of you. Well, she has to. 
If oh, she, she always watches. Yeah. She sends me emails right after the show. Yes, and how she loved awesome it. it is. Yeah, she said she really liked all the guests. She says she Hope, has. She's got a big crush on Neil. Actually, maybe Neil should maybe. be the one to do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Neil, Neil. See? I think Neil needs a both date, too. Both me and too. Neil are in the yeah. same boat. <laughs> and Neil are in the same page. Well, maybe she likes both if, of you. I don't know. Neil's... Uh, <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I just thought... <laughs> All right. I just... <laughs> <laughs> don't give him a microphone. What, Kiwi. Have, I, what, have, I stum- what have I stumbled no. onto? What have I actually right, stumbled into here? Kiwi's What's up, Hetty Hunter? This is crazy. Hetty Hunter Kiwi. What's going on, brother? What's up, man? I stumbled, stumbled into this weird conversation about Pam McCall in weird positions and stuff. <laughs> like, here, pull, pull the... Uh, yeah, there, there you go. I don't know, man. She dresses in all that bi- those no, business no, suits. I, no, no. I'm not even... I'm, I wouldn't even, hey, you I know wouldn't even the, be the I'm, cameraman hey, for that. I refuse to be a part of that. You know the upside to that is she doesn't smoke cigarettes because I don't like cigarettes at all. path here. We'd get along great because she doesn't smoke. She doesn't like cigarettes. No, and no. I don't like smokes either. So we like I'm I'm totally like we have that in so in common. Made in heaven. I mean, we went, oh like, imagine God. if we have you that in common. Like made to be how together. much more we have in common? Yeah. Like uh, wedding bells. I, I think. can only imagine. Like. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Her that uh, phoned the Duncan Dabfist? <laughs> was it was it her that phoned Duncan Dabfist? Because they've got a little recording on YouTube of uh, of of the person that called Duncan Dabfist, like nah, 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 we represent Sam's blah blah blah. Do you know if that's her? I don't know, no, but I'd love know. to hear okay, that. Uh, yeah, it's it's available on the Duncan Dabfist Facebook page as a as a web. Can link. we can we pull that up? <laughs> uh, yeah, if you can um, pull up the Duncan, Duncan Dabfist. Let's see if we can pull that up. Yeah, okay, okay. Oh, I want, even if it isn't her, that just well actually listen. you know what I have this set up to play. Oh here wait let's see if we can do it. I, I don't. That's okay. I can go right over. Okay, where can we find it? Yeah, Kiwi? where was this kiwi? Uh, on on the Duncan Dabfist Facebook page. So okay. If you go to okay. Facebook Duncan Dab Fist and then do a search page. for Duncan Dab Dabfist, Dab it should be there. That's where I saw it. It was posted. And it was by, uh, actually her calling. Well, yeah, we, don't we don't know. We don't know, but um, oh, but, but yeah, it's worth the list. It's worth yeah, a listen yeah, to, yeah. anyways. I did hear about it, but I didn't hear the recording. Me neither. But that'd be worth a listen. Or even um, the cannabis. I just want to hear my girlfriend's. I just want to hear my girlfriend's voice. It's probably. Yeah, I think that's exactly linked. That that links with. Yeah, let's see here. <laughs> he should have been here earlier, Neil. I had to. Highlight video? Is it in the highlight video? I'm a, I might sober oh, up for her. That's not it. No. Okay. No, that's not the one. I quit smoking weed to be with Pam. I'll, I'll find it on my phone. Okay. Yeah, no, that's not it. Um, maybe here. Um, let's see here. If I go to. Facebook itself, is, I'm not logged in, so. Oh, yeah, I see, I see. That's going to be part of the issue. Wow. Let me. Bless you. Yes. You have the Goes cutest sneeze. Night. I love that sneeze. It's just so adorable. She's pretty adorable. Duncan. She is adorable. Dab okay, fish. let's see here. Uh, uh, this is killing my back here. I should have brought this thing closer. Here, I'm, oh, yeah, I'm I have the table a, closer. I'm leaning over. I, I like have it on my phone thing. right here. Oh. Duncan Davis, Sam Threat Audio. So if you okay, if you, okay, I'm logging in here. Yeah, or Sorry. you can go to or you can go to YouTube and, and do a search for that. But that that this is precisely what I was referring to. Uh-huh. <clears throat> All right, well, so this thing doesn't seem to be logging in for some reason. Oh, it, it says it's like correct. You. Oh, fuck. All right, well, we, don't, we don't have it set up. We got to deal okay, with that well, later. We don't have... We got a jack, uh, oh, headphone can, jack for Kiwi? You can put it up to the speaker. There oh, we go. Okay. All right, we'll let's do that. Yeah, let's, do that. That's that. the best way to do that. Do, do, do. Okay. Cut through the ads, maybe? Nice. Okay, no, no ads. All right, so... Uh, that won't help us at it. this point. You know a guy named Jack? It takes a little while for it to... Apple Jacks? Mm. I'm hungry. I was going to say, it sounds like her. So we have a conference. And if you know that this is 
There we go. Thank, thanks, Neil. It sounds like her for sure. Beautiful. Wow. Well, that, that's Neil's exactly what I know. It sounds like her. Yeah, house, exactly. Absolutely. I, I know my girlfriend's voice. I, yeah. Wow. Yes, I know my girlfriend's voice. Awesome. I don't know her. Yeah. yeah. That's really awesome. We've got to confirm on that's that. That's her. Well, who knows? She's claiming not. Yeah. But we, Somebody we, needs to track yeah. her down. Use the old vocal. Uh, Vocal software, you know. I'll get her making different phone calls. Yeah, we can, we can call her up and like, we can. You know what we'll do? We'll call her up and pretend we're the Duncan, whoever they are, or wait, the police, and be like, "You're oh, this is uh, Duncan Police, Duncan RCMP. <laughs> we're calling you back about the dab fest thing. Let's see what she says. <laughs> She'll be like, "Oh, thank you for calling me back." Let's right? write her a letter because that's her favorite thing to do. Yeah. I'll Ash- write a letter. Ashley, I'm um, writing a letter. Okay, so um, right we got to play letter. this because this is important. What are we important. playing? Um, this is Jamie Shaw. Oh, right. And my interview with about Jamie the LP thing. about the Canadian Association of oh, Medical no, Cannabis liquors. Dispensaries. And the they liquor say board they thing. They don't like it in liquor stores. They don't want liquor course, stores to be I able agree. to sell it. Fuck that. So they're the dispensary people. So the dispensary people are being left out. So uh, their union. The dispensaries are already set up for it. So why, yeah. why would you not continue that platform? Yeah. You just call it the dispensary slash regulatory. Regular recreation spot. I uh, I believe that everybody should be allowed to sell it. Liquor stores should be able to sell it. Call it Super K Dispensaries should be able to sell it. Seven Eleven stores. Fatties. Sevy. Right? Daycare should be selling it. <laughs> Daycare. Uh, wherever. Yeah. That's very progressive. Wherever. <laughs> Anywhere. I don't care. Right. You know what? <clears throat> sure, they do. I think the overall <laughs> message. If they'll deep fry your fucking onion rings at high school. And they should have pot in the vending machines. The overall message should be saturation. <laughs> we should just absolutely have it everywhere for recreational, for medicinal, for all purposes, because it's right. a plant. It's, that's, that's the bottom line. Yeah. They should just hand it out at street corners. Like, they should have shovels and just... Whoosh, just oh, yeah. I mean... Okay, you know what yeah. they do, like, in parades where they throw candy to the kids? They should just throw they buds. They should throw buds off the tops of all the buildings. Like they do in Canada Day. Yeah, is, it, you know, they just, should. is it actually illegal? To, is it illegal to throw seeds of the cannabis variety into the environment? No. Ah. We should do that, too. I'd say it's healthy. There we go. There we go. All I, of I the highly, above. I highly encourage that since it's not illegal. <laughs> okay, so let's listen to why the Cam CD folks don't think that liquor stores are the best place for it. And here we go. Oh, here, here we go. go. Here we this go. Is Shaw. Of, other than it, other than the reason that they're going to be put out of business. <laughs> well, there's just that. There's that. <laughs> there is that. <laughs> well, you know, there's, the yeah, there's, the full, there's a few the other reasons profit too. Reason. So, yeah. Damn, I got to open up a liquor store and a weed shop. Shit. <laughs> There might be alternative Sorry. models that That'd could... That'd be fucked up because re- I couldn't sell booze. both, though, right? Like so. You couldn't be like, if mm, it'd be a tough one for me. I'd be like, the liquor store's like, we'll sell weed. That's because they're scumbags. Like, like, you can't do that. You can't put scummy scummy people who sell death liquor in a bottle. It's two different well, but worlds. How, but right? who are these people? Can't anybody get... But if, I'm just, if I want to open a liquor store, I should be allowed to, right? So why can't me and you open a liquor store and then we can open a fucking weed store? Because I can't sell booze in good conscience. Well, we people. don't have to. You don't have it's like to death. sell. I it's like you come. Yeah, you open the booze store. Hold on, you come in. Booze. There's like sell four bottles on the shelf, and the, the weed side's just fucking stocked. You're like, well, we got a couple of. I have nothing. And just against carry the booze. worst booze nobody wants, like OV like for booze. beer, you know, or like real shitty like five star whiskey that nobody wants to buy. And there's just lots of weed options. Then yeah. I, because I can't sell alcohol. Yeah, maybe I wouldn't country. sell. That's I so fucked up. Who you're right. Do I don't that? think I'd want to sell it myself, but I want to be able to buy it though. Well, yeah, but why in the liquor store? No, I want For to be able to buy access. booze too. I think I think I Jerry's about go buy alcohol. I want to be able to buy. You can. You can go buy bubblegum booze. But would I want to sell booze? That's bubblegum vodka. Mm-hmm. Who the fuck drinks bubblegum vodka? It's Me, too, Greg. It's two different words. That shit's delicious. I love that guy. I love that booze. All right, here. Oh yeah, <laughs> so does my <laughs> so does my six year old. Uh, I know, like, we were, Daddy. Can you give me the bubblegum we vodka? We were getting loaded the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what do you want from the Bell B, sweetie? She's like the bubblegum vodka. <laughs> I'm like, Daddy will get you two six. <laughs> it's holy fuck, uh, man! Like, why you're do you caring make father. that? Like, that's yeah, see? Crown Royal for Christmas that's in the right. bag. It's all fancy. We celebrate oh, I saw together. Jack Daniels had, or wait, it was like I think it was Jack Daniels had like a teddy I'm sorry, bear. It's disgusting how they yeah. fucking pump teddy bear booze, with it. man. They like, and they want to do the. They that's what I mean. They put that same platform. Sorry, you can't demonize my fucking weed like that. You're right. I don't now, want to be. I don't like your linking poison. them either. Don't put, my, don't put my medicine awesome power plant with your poison of death in well, a bottle. Well, they can separate it in the store. 
<laughs> okay, let's watch. Uh, yeah, let's okay. watch the let's video. Do it. Let's watch it. No, I, I'm, I'm right in the middle on this one. I don't know what to think. I'm lost on this one. Okay, here's Jamie. Jeremiah here. I'm with Jamie Shaw of the Canadian Association of Medical Cannabis Dispensaries, also known as CAMCD, which is a, a union of now illegal medical marijuana dispensaries in Canada. Um, Jamie, good to have you on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Now, Jamie, I wanted to ask you about this latest press release put out by CAMCD. Um, and as I said, you guys represent medical cannabis dispensaries that are, um, at the moment, kind of in a gray area. And we now Very have, much so. Yeah, we, we, we now have news items showing liquor stores in several provinces, um, at least the, the people who represent liquor stores, that's the union here in British Columbia that represents the government liquor store employees, and the mm. uh, private liquor stores altogether have, um, have been asking the government for permission to sell marijuana. Now, you guys have made a comment about that. Can you tell us what you think about liquor stores selling marijuana? Well, I mean, it's it's an odd choice. There's uh, no other jurisdiction in the world has done that. Even Washington State that put it under the Liquor Control Board still, actually, they changed the name of it to the Liquor and Cannabis Control Board. Um, and they never tried to put the put cannabis in liquor stores. Uh, there's some issues with that, for sure, um, that aren't necessarily, uh, doesn't necessarily negate that it could be underneath the liquor control board, but selling it in liquor stores is, is what we would have a bit of a problem with, particularly if that's only where it was sold. And so, Jamie, what is it that's wrong with selling marijuana in a liquor store? Well, there's a bunch of different things. I mean, one, we have not, our public health policies around alcohol have not been super successful. Um, cannabis is not the same substance as that alcohol, but we do know that when the two substances are mixed together, um, the, the effects can be a little harder predict, to predict than either one on its own. Uh, you know, there are also a lot of people that are using cannabis to get off of things like alcohol. Um, so putting it in a, a consumption-oriented environment like that may not be the best option. Right. Now, the liquor store people are saying they're the best ones to do this because they know how to check IDs better than anybody else. Is that something that they have an advantage over anybody else on? I, I don't think that that's actually ever been proven. I mean, I know um, I, I was underage in Canada at one point, never had any problems getting alcohol, ever. Um, so I'm not sure, you know, how they exactly make that claim. Corner stores are checking for IDs all the time in terms of cigarettes. And, uh, you know, dispensaries obviously check IDs as well. So we, we actually usually issue our own ID cards based on their paperwork uh, and their IDs. So... Um, it's an odd argument for them to be making. Now, um, maybe just before we go too much further on that side, you could tell us a little bit about what CAMCD actually is. Absolutely. Um, we were formed in 2011, uh, and it was basically a way uh, for dispensaries to pool resources. I mean, uh, we've been around for a long time, and we were all sort of working on our own, uh, pushing our own agendas and and duplicating a lot of the same work. So uh, what CAMCD did is we sat down, we figured out some uh, standards, some some industry best practices that we could all agree to, and then um, developed the certification program with, with UBC and the SEED program. And then recently we just launched the trade membership program, which is uh, requires compliance to 18 of those standards. So we can be sure that all of the dispensaries that are in CAMCD are working towards the same goals with the same ideals in mind. Now... As I said in the beginning of the show, you guys represent the dispensaries that aren't actually legal yet. Um, you know, in Canada, we have a strange situation where we have federal laws that would basically ban the dispensaries completely and put these people in prison. Um, but we have licensed producers allowed by the government to send pot through the mail. Um, but those aren't the ones that you guys deal with. Uh, in terms of licensed producers? Yeah, the LPs. Yeah, no, licensed producers deal directly with uh, customers. You know, we also still have a large MMAR market uh, where people are still licensed to be growing cannabis um, and providing for others, and that's still not been sorted out. Um, we're waiting for the large trial to see how that goes. So, I mean, currently in Canada, there's three medical systems um, that are all competing uh, with the black market, basically, at this point. And now the LPs, would they be, is it possible for an LP to get certification from CAMCD? 
Uh, we did look into that. Um, part of the issues, I mean, because there are mail-out-only dispensaries, um, but part of the issues have to do around um, community. Like, we have requirements around dispensaries are required to give back to their communities. Uh, they're required to give back to their patients. Those types of things don't really fit into the LP system. Um, so, I mean, it's, we wouldn't be totally opposed to a, a licensed producer if, if they wanted to apply as a mail-out dispensary, um, but there might be some issues uh, in terms of, like, if they don't have an office where patients can come in and visit, for example, um, that, that would disqualify them as well. So. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that in Canada, of the type of uh, dispensaries that aren't in the legal status right now, there's lots. I mean, we're looking at probably 200 or more of these things now. Yeah, I would say close to 300 now. Yeah. And that's not just in big cities either, like Vancouver and Toronto, where there's, you know, over 120 in Vancouver, something like close to 40 in Toronto, but other smaller places as well across the country. Yeah, well, I, mean, I think there's probably more than 40 in uh, Toronto by now. Um, it's The numbers have been growing drastically out there. Um, but yes, I mean, you're looking at Nanaimo that's got about 10 dispensaries in the area, and Kelowna and Vernon that have about 10 dispensaries in the area, and uh, Port Alberni, I believe, only has one, but there's a couple more up in that area as well. Uh, there's uh, dispensaries in Saskatchewan and Alberta. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's definitely a nationwide thing. Mm -hmm. And now, of these groups, um, you know, at the moment we're seeing a bunch of them being targeted by local police forces in some of the smaller places like uh, Nanaimo, where 16 people were arrested at three different dispensaries. So we still have this, you know, back and forth between local police forces and the feds who have basically said all marijuana will be legalized at some point. Um, you know, is that, I mean, have you heard about the distress that this is causing to some of the people in the dispensaries? Oh, of course, um, particularly to, to members. I mean, every time an action like this happens, uh, patients start getting stressed out about whether they're going to be able to still get their medicine or not. Um, so this is, a, it's definitely a big issue for uh not only dispensaries but for their members and it's hard to say right now what's going on like whether these were investigations that were started under the harper government um we do know that in nanaimo for example those dispensaries reopened and the city is now looking at regulating them so it looks like they've moved past that enforcement like they finished off their investigations and now they're actually going to do something that hopefully will address the situation mm -hmm. well that'd be great <clears throat> because they were making threats earlier that the raids will continue and all of these things so, mm -hmm. yeah, I'd be glad to see it end. Now, Jamie, I just wanted to ask you again about the liquor stores and their plan. We have the BC liquor store plan. We have the Ontario one that they're pushing forward. Um, mm -hmm. Now, the BC plan, the thing that, you know, I have a problem with is not necessarily that they'll be selling it in a liquor store, which I don't think is the best place for it. I kind of have more of the idea that everybody should be allowed to sell it no matter where they are. But um, the, the thing that bothers me about the BC liquor store agreement is there's a moratorium on any new liquor stores until 2020. So it's the way it yeah. seems, would be, not only would it be a bad place to sell it, but it would also be giving these people a monopoly. Yes, yeah. Well, and there's, I mean, there'd be a lot of issues still to work out around that. Like, would they, you know, with the moratorium on liquor stores, would that count towards, like, say, private liquor stores that weren't actually going to be selling liquor? Because one of the things that we've heard around their plan was that you could apply for a liquor store license and then just not sell liquor and, and only sell uh, cannabis, which seems a little odd. Um, and clearly there would need to be some sort of separate program worked out for that with separate standards. I mean, cannabis is not alcohol. It doesn't have the same storage and handling requirements um and obviously the usage information is going to be quite different mm -hmm. yeah and <clears throat> really like we were saying before it seems like an odd place that you know these private liquor stores where when i go in there you know they don't even know anything about beer or wine really they yeah. know very yeah. smart not. so are these you know my question is are these really the people that should be handling cannabis which there's a lot of information you need to know about pot there is, yeah. I mean, that's. Uh, I think public education campaigns are, are going to be a big part of this. I mean, we've seen that in Colorado and Washington and, and um, California as well, uh, where they've really uh, done a lot of work educating the public on cannabis. And, and, you know, even that needs to be worked out. At one point, they were looking at banning pregnant women from, from dispensaries in Colorado. Luckily, they looked at the evidence and went, well, that makes no sense. And so they didn't move forward with that. So, I mean, ideally, what we're, what we're hoping for out of legalization is that people 
will actually start studying this plant without bias and and learning about this plant without bias. And once that happens, I think we're really going to start seeing the stigma erode pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Now, you guys released a press release um, a few days ago, December 16th, with the headline, Dispensary Association Agrees with Public Service Unions. (laughs) No need to reinvent the wheel. And then the subhead is make sense to use existing system for cannabis distribution. Now, when I first read that, I was a little confused because <laughs> I thought you guys were supporting the public service unions because it was saying you agree with them. But uh, in the details, of course, that's not what you guys were saying. Well, I mean, I, we agreed with their principle that there is no need to reinvent the wheel. And, and we absolutely believe that's true. And dispensaries are the preferred model in, in most uh, jurisdictions in North America. Um, actually, very few that have any kind of legal or, well, actually, none that have recreational, but only a few of the, the medical legal jurisdictions don't have dispensaries in them. So, it, it, you know, that's the. It, it, to us, that makes the most sense. It doesn't make sense to say, oh, it makes sense for us to do it because we sell alcohol when it's actually a totally different substance with totally different requirements. So um, I think there was some agreement there. We've also been a little confused because, I mean, Rona Ambrose came out with a statement that we sort of half agreed with, and that's like the first time that's ever happened. <laughs> um, you know, we didn't agree with the reasonings why, but we did agree that it shouldn't be sold in liquor stores. So, you know. Mm-hmm. Now, <clears throat> There's a difference, obviously, and this is something that in Colorado and Washington uh, the activists have been trying to pay attention to, and that's the difference between a medical cannabis dispensary and a recreational cannabis dispensary. Is Cam, like CAMCD is the Canadian Association of Medical Cannabis Dispensaries. How are you guys adapting to this new environment of recreational dispensaries? Well, it's an interesting one because, you know, in Colorado, for example, the medical dispensaries were the recreational dispensaries. You, you the, the first ones required you to be an operating medical dispensary before you could sell recreational cannabis. Um, that makes sense to us, but there are, you know, there's still this was never about an end to recreational cannabis for us is medical cannabis is its own thing and the, the patients have their own needs and their own requirements and so for us our mission is still medical cannabis but obviously a lot of our standards you know if you remove some of the medical documentation requirements it's pretty much the exact same standards that you would require for for recreational so obviously we're willing to work with whoever whatever uh, group or body gets to govern this and gets to figure this out but um, for us yeah dispensary are the ones that make the most sense. Mm-hmm. Well, what are the what are the most important differences between medical and recreational, and what you'd need to, you know, what is it that you'd need to actually pay attention to bigger picture about the differences there? Well, I mean, for uh, there's some, you know, some some kind of uh, more tangent tangential points about that, including like would we have CBD strains if it was a purely recreational market? Uh, so there's there's things in terms of the strains and uh, the cannabinoid profiles. But just beyond that, if you are using cannabis therapeutically, for example, it, you don't really care what benefits you're getting. It's not really that important. You're getting some, great, doesn't really matter what. If you're a medical patient that's seeking relief from specific symptoms or something like that, it's really important for you to understand the difference between the strains um, and which ones are going to be more effective than others. And of course, dispensaries have been dealing with patients for a long, long time. We've been able to, to collect that information and, and share it amongst our members. So it's been a, a really useful resource. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really, it's about having information about the strains and really knowing what's best for what. You know, and, and that's, yeah. I'm impressed when I go into the medical cannabis dispensaries here in Vancouver with how knowledgeable the staff there really are. Um, you know, they're, they know the product. A lot of them have been doing this for many years, um, and they really care about the product as well. And because these people have been willing to put their asses on the line to go there and do this stuff. That's exactly right. I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, when, when they open it up to everybody, it's going to be harder to find. Maybe you'll have to go to a specialty store. You know, I, the way I see the wine model now is similar to that, though, where you have the liquor stores that sell all the big name brands and mass produced stuff. But you also have the wine connoisseur market. Um, mm-hmm. Is that something that you think would fit into that model? I mean, is that enough, though? No, I don't believe it is. I mean, I think you'll see that just on the recreational side, right? Like, I think you will see dispensaries that are a little bit more like um, McDonald's, for example. Um, and then you will see more high end um, connoisseur type uh, dispensaries. So that's still both on the, on the recreational side, I think. Mm-hmm. Now, will CamCD be opening up to recreational dispensaries in some way, or allowing for that end? Have you? What are you guys going to do? It's 
Um, you know, we're still trying to figure that out. We're talking about how to do that uh, in the best way. Um, for us, the big thing is, you know, um, one, one of the benefits of Cam CD was for patients because they can see the Cam CD decal on the door and they know that that dispensary has strict practices that's going to protect their information and they're going to have some medical knowledge. Uh, so anything that we do to open up to recreational dispensaries, it's going to be really important that patients can tell the difference. Yeah, absolutely. That's really the main part, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and because that's what it's all about is being a resource for these patients. Um, and Jamie, is there a place where people can, um, you know, get information? I guess online is the best place to get information about CAMCD. Yeah, www.camcd.ca. Mm -hmm. And but where, like, where do you guys have your dispensaries? Who is it that's um, part of the CAMCD system? Uh, that also is up on the website, and we're uh, we have a couple Toronto dispensaries, Saskatchewan dispensary, um, and and DC ones. That the number's been growing pretty drastically over the course of the last few months. So uh, I can't actually give you an exact number, but right now I think what we focused on getting Vancouver ones through because they had to have the letter of acceptance before their uh, application dates. So the numbers in Vancouver right now are a little high, but we'll be looking at doing Victoria very shortly because their regulations are going to be coming down the pike as well. So. Mm -hmm. And now, of course, in Vancouver, yesterday we had Trudeau uh, meeting up with the mayor here talking about mm -hmm. marijuana and what's changing. Now, and in Vancouver, of course, we have this new um, city council system where they've now announced, I think, eight dispensaries that will be allowed to remain open. Um, uh, well, eight that have moved through to the next step. Yeah. To the next step. Yeah, they, they're giving the other ones six months to come up with a new location, things like that. Uh, how do you see the future of Vancouver's medical cannabis dispensaries? I mean, is there going to be a war with enforcement? Are people going to stand up against this? What's going to happen here? I don't know. It's going to be interesting. I mean, the city's been uh, fairly, uh, you know, willing to work with dispensaries to try and find new locations to try and, you know, they've granted a couple of extensions at different points for people that were having trouble getting the filing in at times. So, I mean, our impression is that they really do want to work with dispensaries to get as many through as possible. What that actually is going to look like is is almost impossible to say at this point. I mean, we're looking at, we don't know the results of the declustering. We don't know how many people are going to get uh, variance um, acceptances. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a lot of questions about that right now. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, in their own uh, comments on the subject, they've said that they don't think by the end of it more than, you know, 10 something percent is going to to actually make it through and that was you know a few months ago now but i mean we have 120 dispensaries or more in the city and the declustering is going to remove a heck of a lot of them um it seems yeah. like there's going to be a lot of unhappy customers and uh dispensary owners yeah it's a possibility i mean the one uh one of the benefits i guess of, of the distance requirement that we actually think is probably not necessary but one of the one of the benefits of it is that it will sort of ensure that there's decent coverage in the city so uh, that everybody should have a dispensary fairly close to them whether it's going to be the one that they prefer or not is, a, is another question um mm -hmm. and how many options they have in their area also uh will still be up to question but that that is one of the things that uh, is San Francisco did the opposite. They when they first launched, they said everybody had to be in this one area, and then of course every business in that area was a dispensary, and people were complaining about having to travel all across the city, and so they ended up coming up with this distance requirement thing that's very similar to what Vancouver's using. So, um, I mean, we're hoping we can see some some give back on that because we think the 300 meters from dispensaries and schools and community centers there's a lot of issues with each of those uh three points so mm -hmm. well just in the end that we can get amended it just doesn't provide for enough of them with the the market we have now i mean whether or not i mean because of the distance well, requirements it forces a lot of them to close doesn't it Yes, it, it is going to do that, and and um, it, it's also this is also where some of the numbers start to get weird because the city uh, originally said that the distancing requirements would allow between like eighty and ninety in the city. So then, when they started saying twenty later, we weren't really sure what that was based on or where that was coming from. Um, so I mean, it, there's again, there's still questions there because according to their estimates, should be allowed to be about ninety, but looking at what's going on in this in the licensing process it doesn't look like there's going to be that many mm -hmm. so maybe some discrepancy between what's available and what they're actually allowing through yes 
lease. Yeah, and you know, when we've seen rent speculation, we've seen people like get leases on things in areas that they know are going to be safe areas, and then try and repurpose those leases and sell them to people that want dispensaries. And so there's been some real estate speculation going on as well. Now, what about dispensaries who choose to stand up against the government regulations? Does Cam CD support that? Um, I, I would have to. It would depend on the on the issue, right? Um, I mean, we you know part of uh, we've always been asking for regulations. Um, I think we've always kind of known that when we got them, we weren't really going to like everything about them. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, it, it really would depend on on the individual situation and and why they're they're choosing to stand up for it. Mm-hmm. Now, I haven't really dipped into the the liquor store plan for Ontario, but I'm assuming it's similar to the BC one. Um, and in fact, your I think that the press release was that just in response to the the Ontario one, or did that cover the? Yeah, it was one? mostly a response, but I mean, it was sort of a, you know, it came up in Manitoba as well. Um, so right. I think it was just overall a response to the whole thing. But yeah, I believe the, one of the main differences was here in BC they were talking about in private liquor stores, um, even though it was also the public union. So it sounds like it would be both public and private. Mm-hmm. Um, and I could be wrong about this, but I, I kind of had gotten the impression that Ontario was just just their public ones. So right. um, I'll have to look into that a little bit more. Well, Jamie, I really appreciate having you on, and thanks for all the info. We'll definitely check in with you um, to see what's happening as this moves forward. But, man, what an exciting time. Oh, absolutely. Interesting times. What's up, guys? We're still chilling, smoking. You guys were hanging with us for a while. We were eating candy, dabbing. Um, Having good times. Good times. Cannabis Culture Headquarters. Yeah, man. Vapor Lounge. West Hastings, Vancouver. Come on down. Come on down. Get high with us. Bring your weed. That's right. Bring your dabs. Or if you don't have any, you can get dabs at the dab bar. That's right. $5 a dab, I think it is. That's right. And you can get vapor bags and bong totes, too. There's the new Canada bar going upstairs on the third floor, I believe, this evening. Yeah. I've heard rumor. That's tonight. I've heard rumor. Yeah, we're installing all kinds of new stuff. So We got our new studio built now. Come on down. I'm pretty sure the next show that we do will be in the studio. In the new studio. And the next show won't be next Friday, but the Friday Friday after. after because oh, next Friday is Christmas. Yeah, because of the Christmas deal. So, yeah. Everybody that, getting high. That's only a week away. Christmas is one week away. Wow. It's crazy. Seven days till Christmas, ladies and gentlemen. I think it is. The countdown begins. So, Have you got yeah, all your Christmas we'll presents? We'll see you guys when. Have you stuffed that over. turkey? Nah. What? Stuff the stockings? I, I'm going to stuff Pam McCall's turkey. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, that's not I'll a holiday image I want. I'm dreaming <laughs> of a Pam Christmas. Oh, no. Um, all right, so we also have another video to play here now. This was Tommy's video. Tommy um, came to my shop. We all got high and, and yeah, what's got this silly. All about? I don't know. They showed up unexpectedly, like in this van. Uh. And we'd line up a bunch of our heady pieces and did like an epic gauntlet dab session and nice. filmed a bunch of it and made asses of ourselves which <laughs> i'm pretty sure is what we're good at being stoners like hey let's get on social media and be fools <laughs> uh, let's see here oh man i'm trying to find tommy's thing he sent me I, he's he said that he sent it i know i have it here it is oh i have to just key it in so yeah they were doing their travel across the country they were going across canada the cross yeah. canada heady tour yeah. And they filmed, did a bunch of filming, and yes, I, Saskatoon was one of the spots. That, My the shop, shop was one of the shops. Yeah, exactly. And we did a Szechuan. Szechuan. Yeah, a uh, gauntlet style. Talked a little about Saskatoon culture, life, and the lovely way of getting high in Stoon. Uh, and how is that going there? Oh, yeah, the, see, there's two different types of ways of getting high in Saskatoon. You either do recreational or medicinal cannabis, like I choose to, or you can enjoy. Oh, there it is. You can enjoy some getting real high on some hard drugs. Yeah. And there's a special place where you can get all your necessities for using hard drugs. Uh-uh. And, but there's some explanation of that in the in the Cross Canada's tour there, ah. as we uh, experience as we experience skunk funk in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. If you haven't been there, you definitely want to come check it out. Okay, here we go. So we're going to give you the video, Tommy's video. Here it is, with sound and everything. Enjoy. And yes, um, looks like uh, that YouTube crap will move out of the way in a sec. Don't worry. Oh, 
Medicated, thank you, sir. <laughs> How would that possibly be? I don't know. A bunch of fucking dabs and some crazy assholes from Vancouver. <laughs> uh, some called the gauntlet. It's been a strange day. Well, let's get more into this whole gauntlet. I don't know. We're I'm gonna, scared. We're going to hit a whole bunch of heady pieces. I think it's 13 dabs, two different sublimators, uh, 11 different heady pieces. This should be quite a thing to do. A couple new ones being broken in. Oh, yeah. A couple of pieces from... Uh, Kahuna Glass are two scalians. Uh, don't know about official names or anything, but my little brother, eight years old, looks at them. There's a, a purple one and a kind of camel blue one. And the blue one, that one's ice, man. What about the other one? He goes, it's smoky. He's like, why smoky? He goes, I know what you do with it. <laughs> uh, well, well educated. <laughs> so I laugh. The Prairie Lifestyles, eh? So you guys are across the country and doing video the whole way, is that the plan? Uh, yeah, we're gonna go coast to coast, uh, all the way to PEI, maybe to Newfoundland, we're kind of playing the deciding game as we get down there, right? Then we're gonna go back to Vancouver, back all the way to Victoria, you know, we haven't quite decided, somewhere that way to get some water, mix them together, and we'll save a little bit of both, then we're gonna come back here for your cup. And we're gonna mix them together, put them in a rig, and we're all gonna smoke them and do another one of these. So where's your next stop? When to pay you guys gonna go see Glenn? Yeah, yeah, I think I would... should go. Somebody should go dab yeah, that motherfucker. I'd like out. to dab Glenn out, and I would also like to chat with him and uh, maybe get a little face-to-face -face interview for Bot TV. Okay, so I just did an interview uh, with Kelly Christie from KDK, and have you guys heard of Time for Hemp? It's like a like a podcast, like a radio show. Out of, it's out of the state somewhere, but I did a big interview with them about what happened, Cannabis Day, and yeah, my Prairie Cop and a bunch of other stuff. So time for him. I think it's on iTunes and shit too. So um, I don't know. Check it out. I already hit and one. And we just start our way around. Okay. So who's first? I guess you hit it. So I'll go next. And then you're after. 
What are we smoking here? What is this? Some kind of lemon <coughs> stuff from Mike. East Coast Sour Diesel. There you go. Second Street West in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and purchase tickets. That'll save you the service fees. Unfortunately, we can't avoid PayPal and how much money they want to make off everybody else's money. So, if you buy online, you're going to pay for the service fees in in the store. You won't pay for that. So, if you're in the Saskatoon area, that's what we encourage. You. Otherwise, we'll see you at the Cup. It's going to be fifth year, and we got a lot of great things happening, including the introduction to the Cannabis Olympics. So, the Cannabis Olympics. Is there any more discussion about that, or is that cat uh, in the bag? I, in the bag. Uh, just, I, it's going to be a series of events that people enter, cannabis-related events, with, with small prizes to win. 
for each event, to, and we'll, we'll just see, you know? Kind of like what the Olympics are, you enter to, to compete. Some of the competitions would be things like the fastest dab or synchronized dabbing. Uh, is this going to be like provincially split? How like the Olympics will be split by countries? Yeah, like, yeah. So if you're from BC and you enter, that's right, or, that's right, that's our province. Are, are we going to go with stars or medals or what's our uh, what's our plan of? Uh, <laughs> Stars, I like that. You get a gold star, and you get a gold star. Gold joints. Gold hash points. Gold joints. Gold joints. Gold joints. You know, you get those gold papers. Silver paper. We'll, we'll make some sort of measuring system out here, but I. It's in the works for the Cannabis Olympics at the 5th Annual PMHC, October 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, 2015, in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. I'm super excited. I know you're all going to be there. Maybe not Tommy. Are you coming? Yeah! Tommy's going to be at my cup. And then we got a lot of great people. I'm hoping Mark and Jody are going to come. So I'm hoping to convince them to come down to my cup. We'll see what happens. It'll be a packed house. You better get some tickets early. Get them now. They're already selling hard. Yeah. Help support local tragedy in your neighborhood, Saskatoon area or around the world. I, I heard that you have some stories from behind the head shop desk. It's behind, yes, it's from behind the head shop de desk. It's a new series coming soon. <laughs> it's stories from across Canada of weird shit antics that happens with inside the head shop. Customer base, usually funny. But here in Saskatoon, there's, uh, like any other city, there's a hard drug problem. So there's a lot of uh, crack use and uh, methamphetamine use. As a head shop, shop we occasionally like get people in here looking for crack pipes. So there's a store that we refer them to. It's actually a, a triple X video store called Pussycat Video. But uh, they sell porn. But on top of that, they also sell all your meth and crack smoking needs. And there they sell the family pack. Is that, is that what it is? The value pack? What is it? Family pack. It is, the, pack. it is the family pack. The family pack consists of one crack pipe, some Brillo, and a lighter. So all you need afterwards is the crack cocaine, and you're ready to rock and roll. So, Which is not supplied. <laughs> that is not supplied by the Pussycat video. Just by the crack dealer, I'll back. Uh, <laughs> or up the street slightly yeah, down maybe three houses. He's close. Does he have family size? He's close. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we make fun of, but there's a story from behind the head shop desk. Stay tuned for another exciting story from your next head shop owner. <laughs> This is the skunk funk guy saying, if you're not here, you ain't fucking anywhere. Please. So that's the best part about my shop, is we cater to Canadian artwork. It, like I'm wearing around my neck. <laughs> well, that's what it's all about. Look at this. The whole fucking thing is Canadian. From all across. From Ontario, BC, Manitoba. Patna and Nish when they used to do proto stuff for me back in the day. <laughs> Five, six years ago. You just Corey God a piece of Canada. Look, that's the Corey God, I'm right there. I can sell that online probably for triple what that's worth. Gibson glass all up top. Holy shit, there's some Ben Evers way down there. There's a Nish Heady down there. And Jesse's little bubblers. Rigs. The 14 mil ones, those are all hippo. <coughs> if you look up here, this is all Helena from Lethal. Most of the the frog style Gandalfs. And if you come over here, this is all Ryan from Shine Glass. A lot of Winnipeg, there's a sticker right down there, Shine Glass work. He does all my Prairie Cup um, trophies. So all the cups are blown custom by Shine Glassworks for the Prairie Medicinal Harvest Cup. And this is all Shine. There's a bunch more Helena in here. And there's some other Shine and some other Canadian artists. Oh yeah. And that's what Skunk Punk's all about, supporting local art.
And we're back. Glassmaster. So that, glass was first, that was the first lag of the heady hikes. So. That was very cool. Yeah, man. You're my shop. I love it. It's all about cannabis culture. So. A lot of cool stuff in there, too. And it's, you expanded it recently, right? We have expanded. We had another about 500 square feet of retail space. So yeah. It, it, we're growing, and Saskatoon's growing, so we want to grow with the culture and the times. Legalization coming around the corner. So, of course, you know how it goes, Jeremiah. I'm I know how running it goes, like the man. boss. That's right. We got to keep rolling. That's how we got to roll. We're going to keep expanding this shit. PMHC of, for 2016. You're, you're be a shot. cannabis culture homeboy, too. Yes, I am. That's right. So we got to make sure this thing keeps rolling hard, my friend. Absolutely. Yeah. Got to make sure I keep my investment protected well. I know. I like that you're an owner of cannabis culture. I enjoy being part of the team. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. funny because uh, every time I come here, like because I only get here every few months, uh, there's a new person working in the lounge and they're like, uh, that's five dollars. I'm like, uh, I'm like, are you sure that's five dollars? That's actually quite. Funny. Really like. I said, that's quite funny dollars. <laughs> On a slice. I said, I'm taking that five dollars off your check. No, I'm just. That's funny. I said, I said we should put a picture up of me. Yes, this. We should. He owns. <laughs> he owns part of the company. Pictures just, of the owners. He doesn't have, have to give tell. you five dollars. <laughs> He's right. only here every three months. <laughs> <laughs> to yeah, check on his investment. Let him in, let him in <laughs> and he wants to sublimate and give him a drink. Well, and it's not... That's yeah. right. It's just that you don't, you know, make it around here that often. I suppose we get new staff members. Oh, it, every know. time I come. We got to, we got to like have a... Sub- Lounge gets busy too. <laughs> so. The picture would be perfect though. Yeah. The owners. <laughs> that's it's right. Like a, I'll just point at the picture. Yeah, oh, yo, they're like, oh, me. okay, that's me. <laughs> they're like, oh. And, and the picture is, is you pointing. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> like, oh, that's him. Oh, yeah, that's definitely him. Look at the picture. <laughs> that's so, hilarious, man. <laughs> bring yeah, it up well, I'm ne- excited, actually. Hold on, bring it up in the next staff meeting. Yes. I don't know if we're going to have any more staff meetings. That was... I <laughs> <laughs> you know what's Uh-oh. funny is Mark doesn't like staff meetings, but me and Jody love staff meetings. I think they're essential. There you go. Yeah, I think staff meetings are essential, but Mark's like, what the fuck do you need a staff meeting for? We have one every day. You guys look like you had fun <laughs> at the Christmas party. I meet with the staff every single day, he says. <laughs> Looks like you had fun at the Christmas party. Christmas party was dope. I it looked like a good time. You guys sent me some pictures, remember? Yeah. Oh, dab I never did I send. Dab uh, Rick. <laughs> they're online. Yeah, yeah. That's online. awesome. I yeah. couldn't be I couldn't be here because I was in Saskatoon. Oh, did we send you fingering photos? Yeah. I got it. I, I got some. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome then. That's funny. <laughs> That's how that was our Christmas spirit we were sharing with you. Yeah, no, it was a great Christmas party we had here upstairs, uh, and yeah, it was like actually. Some of the best food we've ever had at a Christmas party. Everybody was stuffed by the time we were done. Um, so many different Off types of hook. food too. It just kept on coming from like yeah, yeah. very very Kiwi was there. Variety of food. Yes, Ashley couldn't make it. No, oh, that one. <laughs> we were fingering. <laughs> nice. Oh, I was totally drunk. That one should go up on that. Merry Merry Christmas. <laughs> I love that picture. Merry Christmas. I wish we could. The camera could see that, but <laughs> and that's a Happy New Year. Year. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we're like, fuck you, man. <laughs> That's hilarious. Nice. Well, you know, got to make it in the mood for you. So take a little piece home of cannabis culture. That's what we're really all about here on Christmas. Oh, absolutely. Being as offensive as possible. Caring is sharing. You fit right in as one of the shareholders with your offensive nature and personality. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, all the all the shareholders, that's the first requirement is you have to be a complete uh, degenerate. That's right. Gutter, gutter-minded yeah. and sort yeah. of trashy. <laughs> that's the only reason that they accepted me, Must actually. Must have potty mind. I'm only. They only let me have a couple shares though because I'm not degenerated enough. But <laughs> I'm working on it though. You have to leave your dignity in a back alley somewhere. <laughs> we got a good alley behind. We the do building have a too. really Just good go alley. Back dump there. it back there and step yeah. on it and leave it there. No, never, never had any dignity in the first place. That's right. That, that shit will get you in trouble. All right, so enough of this on Pot TV for Christmas. Um, this was our Christmas show, Doodly ladies doop. and gents. Oh, Johnny. Happy holidays. Johnny's sending that. He did. Johnny sent the picture. Oh, John D's, he's in the chat right now, actually. I saw earlier that Johnny. He's in the chat. He's, Josh, on, we, he's we in the chat. He's on the Apple broke Watch. His elbow he's he's still type with that broken elbow. Down. How do you type with your broken arm, John? <laughs> there is a picture he's of him slower. in a sling. He's just really slow. Yep. Oh yeah, metal you're people. a metal. You're More a metal people. Too. He already like, is. Like Luke with he, his middle arm. He already is. He's got 
half his shoulders been rebuilt. Yeah, Kiwi's all totally. He gave me. Yeah, the, no, I've got. Yeah, I've got like he, a metal, lot of bionic metal. parts. But Ashley, what are you? I have uh, a messed up ankle. Remember, the car came and oh. totally smoked me. I do yeah. remember that. Yeah. And so you have robo metal ankle people, sure. robot people. Well, yeah, I'm just hobbling around for a bit. <laughs> oh yeah, and you had crutches too, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Uh, well, you guys. Well, John, like, we hope your arm the way heals of the future, quickly. The way of the Feel better, Johnny put, B. Put put cannabis on it. Johnny B, the stands, the B YouTube. stands for broken. Don't worry, Johnny B's got his suppositories. Only his body. He's got his suppositories, he'll be fine. Hey, put him up boof. there far. Boofity, boofity, oh. boofity, 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 boofity. Have you been using those, Ashley, too? Freddie does that, Taking those but only fun. on his show. Only live on camera. That was awesome. That, that was, was crazy. That and the snorting the key, for those are my two favorite episodes okay. from the One Man Smoke Show. <laughs> snorting it, key it does. and the suppository episode. Hurt. Both of those are fucking... Fantastic. You gotta combine the two. Oh man, that's combine they, the two they, they the put it on oh. like an all times favorite. It should be a game show. Like an all times <laughs> yeah, favorite. It should hit. be a Japanese game show. Yeah. <laughs> Japanese <laughs> Japanese fear factor. Like, Whoa, yeah. geez. Okay, yeah. this is your. You got a snort key and uh, stuff and, some and, and cannabis and sponsors up your ass yeah. at the same time. <laughs> oh my god, that just sounds Jeez. like an afternoon at my house. <laughs> <laughs> it's an afternoon at Freddy's house. That's for fucking sure. <laughs> Documented. It's right. the one man smoke show. <laughs> Unless you're sniffing or sticking it in your bum, then it's the one man uh, sniff holy through. fuck show. <laughs> uh, and uh, oh man, Freddie's usually in the chat somewhere. I hope Freddy. he got a chance to see this. <laughs> <laughs> we had a lot of fun today. <laughs> Yeah, too much good. fun today. Use All right, the ladies and gents, that was fun. So we're fun. not going to be back next week, but we'll be back sometime soon. We'll see you in the new year, hopefully in our new Pot TV studio. So oh, have a good awesome. one, guys, and uh, have a merry rule. Christmas. Thanks for having Peace, me, Jeremiah. Go see Star Wars, Peace. Love you guys. Go see Star Wars. Go see Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs>